Yeah, you get the set all, all good to go, JK. Once we're set down, everything's straight. Is that another that Are you done with that milk? No. No. You're, done with, you're not done with that milk. No. Oh, you're going to have another cup of tea on the pod? Yeah, why? Let me come here. Can't tell because the angles tell. It's hard because like like the inside I'm looking at it sideways, it's not head on. Is this is this in the shot or not? No, you can have a cup of tea. It's fine. Oh. No, you can Can you have a cup of tea? Hmm. Is that alright that angle on that one? If you would have just then started playing left handed at that point, (laughs) would you have got would he have been plus seven rondo? Yeah. Imagine I couldn't play in the Scottish Pro Am again next year. Get all, all I need is a second shot into the first. Mm. That's all I need. Are we good to go, everyone? Yeah, go on. Yeah, chickity check. Let's get it rocking. Check, chickity check. Everyone, welcome back to episode two of the Golf Supply Pod. Zero, 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 two of the Golf Supply Podcast, powered by our good friends and channel partners over at Golfing Days. Now, for those who don't know who Golfing Days are, they are an events and travel specialist. Predominantly here in the UK, um, do stuff like National Club Golfer. Currently got their Bonvoy Masters uh, competition on at the moment where you can win a trip to the Masters. Um, but they also do a lot overseas as well. So we've been out to Portugal for some of their programs. They've done Dubai recently, Morocco. They've got Morocco one coming up soon, but you'll hear a bit more about that in the ad roll. Um, so yeah, thank you to Golfing Days for sponsoring the podcast as always. And um, yeah, we've got a good guest on today, West. Those that actually are fans and those that follow us will know the man. So we'll pause, get in the comments if you do know him. And who are you? My name's Aaron Edwards Hill. Otherwise known as? The Ronsman. Otherwise known as? Ron Dog. Otherwise, otherwise known, known as? A-E-H. And one more, otherwise known as? R. R. Begins otherwise known as? Some would say it's uh, an insult, like an animal you Two would say, words. which is an insult. Rat boy. Rat yeah. boy. <laughs> <laughs> there he is. Aaron Edwards Hill. There we go. We got it. How are you, mate? Good man. You? Not bad. Had a good Dished day him today. up today. Yeah. So we're over at um, Royal Norwich Golf Club. Those who aren't familiar with it, it is a relatively new. How long has it been here? Seven, eight years? Six, seven years? Something like that? Ron? Yeah, ten years, maybe? Ten years? That, yeah, that long? I think it's more than that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So still in golf terms, relatively new golf course, but it is a proper, proper championship golf course for those who haven't played it. Uh, we played off the back tees today. We've done a video with Ron Dog. Um, me and Michael played in a scramble format. Yeah. Ron Dog done his usual Ron Dog self and played uh, his own ball. But we've done a little bit of a... I kind of stitched him up today a little bit. Big time, yeah. Purposely stitched him up today because um, rather than it being the usual format of match play, which would be the normal thing to do, um, I decided that me and Westy were going to play scramble against him. We were going to do it stroke play off the very back tees. But the only thing is, when you're a guest on our channel, you play by our rules. So that there is, is true. There yeah. is that. That is yeah. true. And then obviously we did drag him out to the depths of... that. You can't go any further back at You Norwich. can't. No. No. And, and it's the middle of February, so... Yeah. yeah. It makes it even harder. Yeah. 7,200 yards off of the golds here. Uh, is, we've had quite a lot of rain in this part of England, so it was playing all of 7,800-ish, I would say, yeah, um, out there. And we're not going to give away the result of the video. We're not going to give away what happened in the video because it will be out shortly after this podcast. Um, but you might see from me and Westy looking a little bit happier than Ron here. Yeah. Um, it'll I'll just, be a good watch. I'll just put it out there just before we get into the introduction. We say it all the time. I just I want to play every single scratch on mid handicap a golfer. And like when we're pumped up as well, mm. and we're in a competitive mindset. Anybody on YouTube wants it, then we'll dish them up. Won't we'll we, Ron? Scramble format. Won't we, Ron? Definitely, I think oh. so, yeah. I mean, today, Ash was good today. He was, yeah, I must he was. say, it's probably the That's best a, I've seen him play, yeah. as you, you'll all see in the videos. But I, I would um, agree. 100%. Fair play. Sorry, I, tear, no, I, 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 would, I would agree. There was, there was no ratter. No, no you, there was you, your eye, I golf. mean, yeah, you played. Maybe the scramble will do us both good because at the minute my game was in the toilet, so it took the pressure off me feeling like I had to play. Yeah. Your game, you haven't practiced that much, so it just alleviates. Although, okay, I might not be playing that many shots for the team, but in your head, maybe because there is no pressure, it's now doing you good. Yeah. So this might be, it might be doing us. I agree. I was happy with our play today out there. Yeah. We were saying off camera before the pod started, Raw Norwich is very much a driver golf course. Yeah. It's an off the tee golf course, especially when you're playing it off the backs. It rewards, it, it, it tempts you into hitting driver on a lot of holes. 
And then if you hit driver well on them, them holes, it rewards you. So even though it is long, you still do find yourself like, apart from the par fives and a couple of the par fours, it's like driver wedge-ish in it. So, but I just drove the ball well today. So, um, and putted half that. decent. I put a new putter back in the bag. Old putter, new putter back in the bag. Honeymoon period kicked in. Started to bin yep. a few. And then in the next video, I'll be using St. Hills. So I was going to say, put that away and onto the next. Yeah. Um, that is today's video and those that follow us will watch it. But just Ron, just who are you? How have you got into golf? You know, just obligatory, mm. just you and golf. For just, those who aren't Ron Dog fans. Yeah, and don't know who you are. Just just give it to them flat. Yeah, so obviously, well, my name's Aaron Edwards Hill. I'm, uh, I used to live in Ireland, if I'm going right back. I mean, you probably don't want the life story. Just, just I mean, golfing, bit, golfing career and go- um, who you are in the golf space. So I played for England from sort of 2019 to 2023. Recently turned pro this year. Um... Yeah, used to play like international events growing up, junior events, sort of played as a high level the whole way really, um, until I decided to turn professional this year, so yeah, and that, it's all good. That turning professional was off the back of, um, obviously your main goal as an amateur, I don't want to take words out of your mouth, but your main goal as an amateur, having what would be considered as a relative, a, quite a successful amateur career um, in the time that you was playing for England and doing all that sort of stuff. Obviously, your goal was to try and make Walker Cup. And then, don't laugh because it's not funny. Um, but then, obviously, you wasn't selected for the Walker Cup, which was obviously massively shit because me and Westy were ready to pack our bags and come over to Scotland. We had that plan, do you remember? Yeah, that? we had that plan. A lot of fr- people had it planned, yeah, actually. We had, so. a, we had a, um, not to say that you kind of fucked that, but you did yeah. You did ruin a, a good trip by not, not getting in the team. But... Yeah. Um, and that is the reason why you've now decided to turn pro. Yeah. Well, would it have been, though, if you played Walker Cup or if you didn't, you'd have still turned pro after it anyway? Yeah, I would have turned pro anyway. I mean, for me, like, within amateur golf, I've basically done everything mm-hmm. but played in the Walker Cup. Like, obviously, winning events or not winning events, like, I've not done everything in that aspect. But playing for, playing for the teams, like, playing the European teams, the World Championship, which is a massive thing. That's, mm-hmm. like, the biggest thing other than the Walker Cup for most guys like obviously the guy, guys in like Asia and stuff like that like they can't play the Walker Cup so it's all about trying to get into the world team championships done all of that stuff home internationals so how are them all teams that. picked it's just like selection really so who's selecting it so obviously you have within within England golf they'll have sort of like one or two selectors that'll just pick the team probably based on results and or world rankings and sometimes it's whether your face fits or not. But, mm-hmm. um, so in yeah. world, so when you're playing in a world golf event, mm. is it still done by nation? So you're, you're going in as a nation, but you're playing against the rest of the world, or is it an individual tournament? So the way the, way the world kind of works, it's, you have obviously all these different countries. I think there was like 62 countries or something. Right. So you have everyone, literally everyone playing who plays golf, basically. Um, and you go in as like an individual... So there's an individual event inside the team event as well. So the team event you have sort of obviously 62 teams and it's best two scores out of three to count. So there's three players in each team. Right. Best two out of three to count. And then uh, you have your individual as well, which is obviously the individual champion. Mm-hmm. Is I suppose like world amateur champion. And I you suppose. played in them world events. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I played. Yeah. So that it's usually every two years. They have the World Championship every two years. Uh, it was in France when I played it at Le Golf National. Ryder Cup. Yeah, Ryder Cup. And um, saint Nom la bretèche Never heard of it. <laughs> it's a good track, though. They, yeah. played, they play, used to play a tour event around there as well. Um, but no, it was all good. Amazing experience. I mean, I think we finished, I don't know, 12th or something as a team, which isn't great, like, because we had sort of... We had a very strong team. Like, obviously, I was playing well. Sam Bairstow, who's now on the DP World Tour, and obviously John Goff, who's a great player as well. So it was us three playing. Um, yeah, we didn't do as well as we hoped, but still a great experience. And you can't. What nation won it? I think Italy won it. Italy. Ooh. Yeah. Strange. Yeah, we're not, yeah I wouldn't. I wouldn't have that like one. Japan. So this guy from Japan was, I think he shot ten under around Saint Nom, and then he played. At uh, Le Golf National, shot nine under round two, so he was 19 under for two rounds. Um, they were leading by a mile, but then they ended up just like blowing up a little bit, like shooting like level par as a team or whatever. And then Italy came along and took them. Who are the Golf. best amateur nation? Is it America? 
Yeah, America Has by to far. Be, yeah. Yeah, by one, world have, rankings. Yeah, I mean, there's a big debate there with obviously college, amateur college golf with the world rankings and all of that stuff. But at the end of the day, they had they had like number two, three and four in the world playing for their team. So mm. like us, we would have a strong team. Like I was probably like a hundredth, but then, but I was playing well at the time, like really well. So, and then Sam was probably top 20 and John would be top 30 or so in the world. So we had a pretty strong team. Japan are very good. What was yeah, because just if you just think of like if I think of golf TikTok, yeah, Japan, yeah, the purest, yeah. they're the purest, oh, yeah, they're, yeah, they're just they're, like the slow mos, man. Yeah. What what was the best ranking you got to as an amateur then? Like, what is the the absolute? Uh, so maybe? they had two ranking systems at the time, and I was thirty third in the world oh, on f- one f- of them. Oh, we fucked that from that. Yeah, thirty seven. Because we said thirty seven. Well, it? Aaron used to change it every week when I used to speak yeah. to him leading up to that. He'd say like he used to well. I'll get to how we actually met Aaron. He'll have a different version of events, but um, yeah, he just used to like tell us randomly different yeah. world amateur, amateur rankings. So you probably have lost us a few hundred views on the one that we said 37th. Oh, yeah, because if, if we would have put 33, yeah, yeah, and that, that video done like what 10k or something, you got yeah. up there that one. Yeah, and it <laughs> would be. You probably owe us a little bit of ad revenue for that. Oh, yeah. More money for the boys. Yeah. <laughs> um, but just quickly touching on the amateur sort of scene as a general before we actually speak about the events that you played in, some of the stuff that you won. Um, me and you had a conversation, didn't we, a while back when someone commented about um, people who practice and play in America compared to... Do you remember that comment on Instagram? The guy was oh, basically was saying... saying they can practice more or something. We were saying, saying that. Yeah, yeah. We were saying that. We were saying, like, well, well, there's a reason why all of the best golfers in the world live in America. Mm. I think it was to do with one of the college kids that was, like, yeah. practicing or playing a lot out there. And some just douche just, like, put this comment. And me and you were going back and forth with him. And he just couldn't comprehend that, like... College golf in America is literally like so much like the practice facilities, the yeah. the funding is everything. It's higher than any feeder mm. f- professional feeder tour we've had in. You'd argue Europe. Yeah, but yeah. the scary part about and that it's just is, college. That's just their college golf. But, that, but that's every sport, isn't it? Because the scary part about it is like, all right, soccer, football is getting bigger out there. Yeah, but kids from England still go on scholarships to USA for football. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's the level. Yeah, but I feel like the kids that do that, they're, just not, they're not good enough. Yeah. So you go out to the MLS. But at the end Maybe. of the day, you've got... So if you are any what good at golf in America, like 99.9% of kids who are good you at golf in America... You just lean into that mic a little bit more for me, please. Sorry, I was like trying to like yeah, talk yeah, to you. Yeah, that's so fine. I've got, I've got you through the weird. gap. Um, like 99.9% of people who play golf out there go to college in America. So oh. that just the percentages are there. Like they all get the chances to practice, whatever compared to over here. Like obviously the weather's not as good, stuff like that. But yeah. Yeah. And I don't think enough can be said for like, if you are, if you're practicing on a type of grass and a type of playing condition, i.e. firm or whatever it might be. Yeah. And then you're going to, you know, you're going to play 95% of your season on those exact same conditions. How much easier that is mm. compared to, in England, you're playing over at Woodbridge, your home golf course, Heathland Golf Course, sand based, completely different. You're playing there, doing all your practice in there. Then you turn up at a Parkland Golf Course and it's super soft under your foot. The grass is different on the greens. It is night and day compared to like just playing the same conditions over and over and over. practicing on the conditions that you're going to play in every single week. We don't have that luxury in, in England. No. Just, just, out of my, just out of weather alone, without like different types of golf courses that we play, just out of weather alone, like you say it all the time, trying to play golf in the winter, or trying to practice in the winter, Yeah, waste of time. Yeah, putting on the greens is a waste of time. Yeah, honestly. We had, like, we had that dispute, didn't we? At yeah. West, West, West Durham. Yeah. One day before Portugal. I proved Portugal. it, though. Yeah, it, I proved did. it. Yeah, he, he did. He did. <laughs> in his defence, Ron was saying to us, we, we played West Durham one day before the Pro-Am that uh, Ron joined us in Portugal in November. And... He just stopped putting. Now we thought he was bratting it. There, there was partial brat. No, he. I don't you, think so. No, yeah. he was bratting oh, no, you were well. bratting. Oh, you yeah. were bratting at West You Europe. were full on brat. Strongly disagree. I don't know if the putting <laughs> thing was a as a full brat, but the, 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 there was full brat mode that yeah. day. Yeah, yeah. There was. You're yeah, not was. denying it. We, we won't go into what you shot. Tiny bit. Um, and yeah, he did say to us. He was like, "I'm just going to stop putting because believe me, this will do me over when I get to Portugal. Stop putting, mm. and then." Listen, I don't know if it's coincidence or not, and because you are a good putter, and then we got to Portugal day one, and you just remember that like whole the putt you hold in the dark yeah. for the, the oh, ball yeah. mark. The <laughs> ball mark. the playoff as well against yeah. Dash. Yeah, yeah, down yeah. the hill. It's a joke. Yeah. I continued to putt all the way around Westrum, and I didn't hold a single putt through four days through Portugal. You stopped putting and hold everything, so maybe you were right on yeah. that one. We should have listened to you a little bit more. Yeah. 
Um, but yeah, so amateur career, because before really knowing you, I would say I'm a bit of a golf nerd, love my golf, all that sort of stuff. When it comes to playing as an amateur or tournaments or whatever it is there is to do as an amateur golfer before you turn professional and play on the leagues, I had absolutely no idea about amateur golf or England golf or what that setup was or what no. that looked like or anything. No. So your your 15-year-old Ron or your 14-year-old Ron, at what point was it that, first of all, you got picked up by the county and at what handicap was you at that point? Right, so obviously I lived uh, not far from the Warren and that's where in they F- used to do all their county-like training yep. and stuff like that. So um, I started playing for Essex when I was under 12s, I think. So I was playing sort of under 12s. So I was about 11, obviously 11, 12 years old. And um, I was probably playing off like 19, I'd say, mm-hmm. from what I can remember. Well, when you started playing at 12? Well, when I started, yeah, when I was sort of playing for the county and doing like county trials and stuff like that. You had so a handicap 11 of 19? Years old, 12 years old, I was off like 19, yeah. Why were the county picking you up? I don't know, obviously they saw, a bit of potential, they saw potential or potential. something. They saw um, something. Yeah, but well, they weren't yeah. wrong, but yeah. No. Okay. Anyway, um, so I got down, I got down to, in that space of time, sort of when I was 13, I got down to about five. Well, so, so from 12 at 19 yeah, to 13. 19. Yeah, I was off five. I you got down that. 14 strokes in that Yeah, in year. about a year, yeah. So you were a bandit at 19. Yeah, it was a bandit, yeah, absolute yeah. bandit, yeah. Short game wizardry. Yeah. <laughs> so was that because of you started getting county training maybe that accelerated that as well, or...? Yeah, potentially, yeah. yeah. Um, so I didn't, re- I haven't really had a coach um, until I was sort of eighteen, anyway. So maybe that bit of training and stuff like that definitely helped me out, hundred mm-hmm. um, so percent. So you then, go, they pick you up at yeah. 12, 13, So you're starting to play for the county. When do they start? Is it straight away? From, what What is the first age bracket? You can, is it that the age bracket that you can go under, into county? Yeah, under twelves is where it kind of starts. I think I don't really know as much now because obviously, whatever, it's like a while twelve ago. years yeah. ago, but. Um, yeah, sort of under 12s is where it started for me and probably starts for most people. I mean, they, they probably have like 20 or 30 kids in the squad. Mm-hmm. That then obviously it gets, wi- the kind of higher you go, people end up getting dropped and mm-hmm. you just keep going and going as you go along. But um, yeah, that's it really. How do you get, how do they scout kids at that age? It will be just through junior events like we used to have sort of Essex under 14s tour and you'd go and play it and there'd be kind of scouting kids and you can probably put like a little put your little form in a little CV oh, and so they'll even come, at- come to trials so like we used to have like trials mm. like you would do if you're going to trial for Tottenham or whatever as like a footballer yeah like under 12s or whatever it is um you'd go to trials and then they'd kind of just be like right we'll pick I don't know, 20 out of these 30 guys that came and trialed and mm. then go from there, really. And then they had teams where we used to play like county matches against Surrey, Sussex, all of that stuff, like under 14s and that. But before you're, before you're, you're, you're scouted by Essex to play for the county, you was already entering competition, junior competitions. Mm-hmm. Like, not just competitions that were held at the Warren, like com- just, yeah. Like junior opens. You, oh, it always used to be like junior opens and stuff like but that. why are you entering them if you're off 19? Yeah, that's yeah. I, I was what gonna, do you mean? Like, like you're eleven years old. No, I know, I know that. <laughs> but like, is yeah. is nineteen off of eleven off yeah. eleven year old even, even that impressive? Because Not there really. is obviously eleven year olds around the world but that are off like ridiculous handicaps. So like, yeah. you're still you're, a chopper. Yeah, you're, like, you're, a, you're yeah, an eleven. No, you're good. For, don't get me wrong. Yeah. Like, if anyone's, well, I don't think there's not people, but being eleven year old and being a nineteen handicap, yeah, like, they'd beat my dad. Yeah, yeah, yeah there's, like, can, there's can, loads yeah. of people. Yeah, yeah, that are it's like good that. for yeah. how far you'd poke it around the golf course. I see what you mean. You're still fiddling it around the golf course, still yeah. fiddling out the game of golf. I would say, and you're like, I just think it's interesting that, like, even at that age, like you wanted to compete. And I was to say, why is that as well? So you're Twelve-year-old Ron playing off nineteen, so you still are figuring the game out. You're, you are chopping it around a little bit. Yeah. So, like, at what point are you now thinking? I want to, a, I I want to beat compete, other kids. and two, I want to beat other kids, and three, okay, I might like golf is me now. I want to compete in golf. I've just always wanted to do that anyway. Even when I was kind of growing up, well, I used to live in Ireland. Um, is golf a big part of that? Because you was an Ireland drink yeah. on that. Because your mum and dad, like yeah, people don't that play, don't yeah. know, they like don't play golf. the legends themselves, your old man. <laughs> Doesn't play golf. No, doesn't play. Doesn't golf. play golf at golf. all. No one in my family touched. Where did it come from? Club. I think it must be. It must be Ireland. Where did it's it come from? Just sank in the air. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Um, at Christmas, I just 
bought me little plastic set of clubs. Oh, um, so it was the classic. Um, it was one yeah. of them TikTok ones. Like yeah, yeah, it was yeah, one yeah. of them ones. Give it yeah. a go. And I was yeah. battering it around the house. His old man was like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Funny Can't story, actually. My mum went out. She bought me a club. Um, and she bought me a left-handed club. No, she's right. And it was wrong. And um, I was like, I turned off. I, I went, I was like, ah, oh, mummy, like, I can't hit it. It's left-handed. <laughs> I was like, this is the right, I can't, hit the, I can't hit the ball. And then my dad was like, obviously my dad kind of figured it out and was like, oh, right. Like, yeah, no, you, you wouldn't can't. have said to where it was left-handed. I just think when they told me, you just said like you couldn't hit it. Yeah. Or like, but yeah, to think like you might have actually played left yeah. If you stuck at it. If at I that stuck age, at that, I would have definitely been playing left-handed. Left-handed. 100%. But I, being a brat myself, as yeah. you guys say, yeah. <laughs> I was like, I can't yeah. hit it. Like, yeah. this doesn't work. Like, it's not me, it's, not me, it's the club. And I wonder if you actually did stick to left, because that was when you was young, wasn't it? Like you're really talking, young, like yeah, like four, four five, yeah. yeah. I, might, might, I wonder if, we'll never know, but if you would have just then started playing left-handed <laughs> at that point, would you have got, would he have been plus seven Rondo? Yeah, and we might no, not actually or be would so your, here. Or would your potential cap have been lower? Yeah, you yeah. don't know, do you? You, can, no, you just no. don't know. We say this like about Westy a lot, because we go down the range sometimes <laughs> and we're trying to hit like trick shots and stuff. No, Honestly, Ron, I'm, no, being, I'm being dead serious. I am you. left-handed. He's ambidextrous, so like left-handed, right in left hand tennis and stuff, left-handed as like main. I, I play think like forehand is left hand. Yeah, and then like cricket, right-handed, golf, right-handed, right, left-handed. It's just yeah, but like, we'll go down the range and he'll he'll put a right-handed golf club backwards, like left-handed, turn it upside down and hit wedge shots, and he'll hit better with his nest of nines in his bag. <laughs> just clip it over and over again to the same spot. Maybe that's it. Worth We're not laughing, mate. We're being serious. Yeah, I know. And I didn't look. Maybe I didn't. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> and I didn't look. I don't look no, uncomfortable. No, you don't look, in the you, stance, I don't. Your look swing like, actually looks a little bit better. Yeah. Yeah. Look awkward, like so. Perhaps like in. But now I'm thinking like perhaps right-handed. I've got the bad habits. Left-handed. Yeah. I'm on a clean slate. Yeah, so true. Like, I could go just again. decide. Yeah. I could just decide I'll go again. But you've been but playing for like how long? You've been playing for two years. A couple or of years. Yeah, but so. well, it's not. It's more. But it's not. It's a couple of years. It's, come on now. How many more years? Is it's not light. How many years do you say? How many years would you say it was? What, that you've played golf? Yes. Well, you used to play with us. We played we one, year, one year as a junior. Then like, I'd come and knock You used it. to play all the time at Notley's with us. Me and you used to play the similar amount of golf when we were juniors at Notley. I played one year and then stopped for about 10 years. Yeah, but I would have played one year and then stopped. No, you continued. I, I you didn't. Did. You'd done plastic clubs. Cool show. I didn't. I, my old man never bought me any plastic clubs or anything. Um, but right, okay, so we digress. Anyway, Ron Dog. You're 13. You've got to five handicap. You're playing county golf. Yeah. Getting um, a bit better now, looking you, at you're starting, events. You're starting to look like a golfer at this point. You've <laughs> yeah. gone from chop dog to nearly Ron Dog. You're halfway to Ron Dog. Yeah. Playing off of five, off of 13, which if someone said that to me, I'd say that's impressive. Yep. Um, rather than 19 off of 12. So you've made a big jump down. Like you said, when do you then start entering bigger competitions? And at what age was your first, like, what are the big amateur competitions? What, the like biggest? Juniors. Yes. Junior yeah. events. Like you have... In England, you have like the Reed Trophy, like that'd be a big Heard deal. That. That's under fourteen, like English sort of stroke play. Yeah. So like that's a massive deal. Um, I never got into that, so that was under fourteens, and you had to be. Oh, I was born in December, so if I was born like a month later in January, I would have basically had an extra year because mm-hmm. they do it from the first of January. Um, so when I was fourteen, I was like too old for under fourteens. <laughs> so when I was thirteen, I was off like five, but like kind of four-ish, three got into that event. Mm-hmm. Um, thing is, a lot of good people like develop differently, don't they? So you get people that are 12 and they hit it 300 yards already. Mm. Um, well, or 13. No, but there is people like that. Not 13. No, seriously, I've seen people hit it 300 yards and no, they're 13 you're, you're years You're doing old. one of them exaggerations. Like downwind. Mate, there's a guy playing 13. on the DP World Tour and he's 12 years old in Qatar this week. How far does he hit it? Probably 300 yards. You're like, I'm I don't telling know, you, he probably hits it two, 280 then. I feel like, can we just, JK, can you just find this 13 year old? 12 year old playing on the playing DP in, World Tour. Do you know his in name? Qatar. I don't know his name, no. no. Just, just right. go on the leaderboard yeah. from last week. The leaderboard. I'm I just DP. don't, I just, yeah. Yeah, I'm sure if you put if 12 you just, year old just in Qatar. Say, yeah, 12, 12 year old DP. I'm telling yeah. you, he's playing it. Can we get an age on that, JK? And just confirm he was in... Put in, just search um, DP World Tour 12-year-old and just let us know what that comes up. I just want to see some like driving statistics or something. There's no way he's... Is he big? Yeah, he's massive. If you don't believe... How, how big's massive? 
Well, he, Does he look like an he's adult? He's 12 years old, so he's, he's, like, he's probably like five foot eight, five foot seven, he looks. Oh, so he's if, you didn't know, if you didn't know he was 12, how old would you think he was? If you were just looking at him from like, on the telly? 16, 17, probably. He does he look, 12. look 12. Oh. Okay, for those at home, we'll, we'll, we'll bring it up on the screen now if it is real. We'll, we'll yeah. show you that. Um, but I don't, I don't, I don't think he's banging it 300 yards no, if he's 12 years old. So Even if he's hit, there he's like... There is people that, have, that I've seen hit yeah. 300 yards at 12 years old. Okay. 300 yards is a long way. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Depends on the conditions. Uh, as well. So mm. now I'll see you thrown... He's not, so they're not eating it 300 around not Royal Norwich no, in the way. No one is. What? Well, well... <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll wait for that video Ooh. to come out to roll, see some of the roll the drives when <laughs> yeah. Till's turned up um, okay yeah, yeah. so your read, read, read trophy's a big one never got to play in that because you wasn't low enough at nope. the time at your age no I wasn't low enough uh, more big ones the McGregor trophy that's under 16s so that's going up a little bit it's English under 16s and then you have the Caris which is the English under 18s is it true I'm um, just opening I'm just getting confirmation on, sorry yeah, yeah carry on Ron Dog. Douglas Johns that's um Big under 15s event that everyone used to sort of play in. And where is this? Just UK based, yeah? Yeah, this it's would be all UK. UK. Yeah, I mean, yeah. for me, I used to play in like the US kids events. So, like, they used to be quite big. You had people come from like Australia and stuff playing in them. Still UK? Yeah, still UK. That's up in Scotland, but it's like called the like European. Yeah. And then there was like a world championship as well, like under 18s, US kids thing. And how were you America, doing? But I never, never played that. But how were you doing at these? Were you, were you doing well? well I was doing or? all right. I wasn't. Probably just doing the old Ron Dog normal 10th place job or something. But, yeah, um, standard number for something's ever changed. Um, <laughs> yeah, but yeah, sort of hovering around, doing all right and almost getting there. But And what handicap are you now. at 15? So when you're planning these at 15 years old? So I was getting to sort of 15, 16. I was pretty sure I got down to scratch when I was 15 or okay. plus one when I was yeah. 15. And that's with old money handicap system. That's old system as well, yeah. Mm -hmm. So I was... Yeah, decent enough. Like, just short game used to be electric, and obviously I never really hit it that far. So I was pretty straight off the tee and just mm. plodding it along, sort of golf, the way I used to do. And you're just getting the Rat Boy top tens, sort of piling them up. Yeah. And that's what's come through. So then, when did the big breakthrough win come through? Well, I sort of played played under 16s, played the Faldo series. So mm -hmm. for me, Faldo series has been a big part of my sort of amateur career growing yeah. up. You and Nick, you and Nick are quite pally, aren't you? I always did well in uh, <laughs> in some Faldo series events. So I won I won one of them when I was 16. So I got on the world rankings mm -hmm. when I was 16, won one of the Faldo series events, went to the Faldo series like grand final in um, Dubai, they play that. So they have, I went there three times. I won the whole thing, which was under 21s when I was 19. So when I was a bit later, um, well, because it's like, is it an order of merit throughout the season or something? Is it the Faldo series? No, so that's just like, it's just the Europe grand final. Right. So if you win an event or win your age group, it, so it's you win your age through. group, you have like under 16s, under 18s and under 21s. And I won my age group under 16. Um, and then I won under 18s the next year. Um, and then I think... I won, so I won that when I was 16, 17, 18. So I won it three times, I won my age group three times, and then I went to the grand final three times, won my age group twice, and then I won the overall Faldo Series grand final when I was 19, won the whole thing, like whole event. So <laughs> for me, that was like sort of the biggest... Um, <laughs> Is this the, the right kid, win. sorry, just to stop you? No, that's not him. I was going to say, because he looks 12. Yeah, he looks yeah 12. JK sent that through. That guy's a good player. Louis Clean might yeah. be someone else. Um, so yeah, so yeah. the Faldo growing up for me was where I started sort of winning winning events and getting into it and sort of thought I'd be good. And then, yeah. Boys, let me tell you about the National Golf Club Team Championship by Golfing Days. This event is the perfect golf trip away with eight friends and get a competitive edge going. The top two teams, depending on entries from each qualifying venue, there's four venues, will go through to the grand finale. If your team makes the final, you'll be competing against potentially 10 other teams for the National Golf Club Team Championship champions title and win a team holiday to Costa Navarino, Europe's number one golf venue. Day one, the best six single Stapleford points from eight count. And on day two, the best three bettable pair Stapleford points from the four count. 
The four venues are Forest of Arden, the Oxfordshire, Belton Woods and Formby Hall. And the grand finale will be played at the Players Club in Bristol on the 30th of September. Get yourself involved. Win yourself a trip to Costa Navarino. You and the boys against multiple other golf clubs. Let's go. What's the, so what's it like coming down? Because uh, you always say to me, um, go play a pro event. Do this. See what you're shooting a pro event. Do this, do that. Because, and I would agree with you, Stroke played like the tournament, the tournament golf that you've played. Yeah, I'm not talking clutch tour, two day tournaments, one day events, two days yeah, events, because they days. are very much point and shoot, go as low as you possibly can. And if you blow out, you blow out. That's unfortunately what the feeder tour is in in England at the moment. It's very much like who can just go on a heater for even one day and just hang yeah. on to it for the next day. Four day tournament rounds when you're trying to push yourself up in world rankings or whatever you might be, you are playing a completely different game than if you are playing just an 18-hole round of golf and trying to shoot a number around 18 holes. Yeah, 100%, yeah. Four days is a lot. You can't... If you, you, well, you can put, your foot, put, put a foot wrong, but you can only put a foot wrong a certain amount of times until you just blow yourself out of the tournament pretty quickly. And then obviously not forgetting... You, they've got a cut line as well at a lot of these tournaments, so if you, you can't a really... A tight cut as well. Yeah. At these big am amateur events like... The Lytham trophies, like this is why, where it's a lot different to America as well. We'll can get onto that afterwards, but um, obviously Lytham's 140 players of the best amateurs in Europe basically playing. Top 40 make the cut and ties, which mm. is for two rounds, it's going to be a tight cut at the mm -hmm. end of the day. Um, same with the majority of them; it's usually top 40, top 50 out of like 150 players. The the British Ams, two 288 of like pretty much the best amateurs in the world top 64 and ties make the cut so of the in the world yeah pretty yeah pretty much so british Am Americans amateurs from other countries over. are coming over to play that yeah, yeah yeah like the british am you have europe asia africa just everywhere south africans playing um south america america just everywhere mm. <laughs> australia mm. <laughs> at what point though so you're going along yeah so now we're we're up to what 18 19 yeah. At what point are you sitting down? Because it would have been before this, or at what point in your head? So you've you've probably got a dream. So you've probably at some point growing up thinking, oh, I'd like to play golf. Yeah. You're playing Tiger Woods on the PlayStation. You're chipping about, and you're thinking, I'd like to be a pro. At what age are you thinking, oh, I could do well? So not really. I'll, I, I like I'll become pro is going to come. But what age are you thinking, like I think I could do this for a living? Like golf could be my did that come at a young age or did that come when you were matured and doing well on the amateur scene in the england golf scene and blah 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 yeah i don't think i don't think it came at a young age i just used to enjoy playing golf really so I used to play it i used to just love competing but i never really thought to myself oh right i could do this for a living until i was probably i would say like 18 17 mm. or 18 like there was a point where i just wanted to just play golf and I was like this I think this is what I want to do and just get on with it and see what I can do as like a career out of it and I think sort of the junior days were good fun like going to events and it was always a bit of a laugh and like you do your practice round but like getting more serious into it say when I was 18 19 and then when I had when I won the Faldo grand final and then I won the north of Ireland in the same year mm -hmm. which is a big big tournament over in Ireland like you get 300 players playing it and it's match play 64 like it's a massive thing over over in Ireland and um, yeah for me just like winning them events I think that's when I really sat there and thought oh I think I could do all right at this mm. um, so you've never worked you don't, you've never actually worked yeah. a day in your life that was my you? next no. point I was going to yeah. touch on so at no point is young 16 year old Ron thinking no Probably well, need a paper round. Maybe, maybe he was thinking he got to 17, 18 and, and Carol and Graham were saying, look, what are we going to do here, buddy? And you was like, do I go apply for office jobs? Do I need a weekend job? Do I, or do I just go full in onto my golf career? Which, don't get me wrong, I think you've made the right choice. I think you're a fantastic golfer, one of the best. I'll, I'll put you in the same... I say you and people like, like professionals I've played with, you and Josh for me, are like two of the two most impressive golfers that I play with. Yeah. Completely different golfers, loads of different characteristics as a part of your game, but I've had rounds of golf with you and I've had rounds of golf with Josh. Probably more with, with you, I've played with you a little bit more, but where I walk off the golf course and I am like a little bit like just baffled to what I've just watched for, <laughs> for 18 holes. And that's where the, which Westy says and which we say a lot like, you are a weirdo. Yeah. yeah, that's where that comes from. You do weird things on the golf course, yeah. and people who are 
people have watched our videos. He's done it on camera sometimes, but I've seen him off camera. We've played a lot of his home course and stuff, and I've seen him go seven, eight deep, and you walk off and everything's just a bit of a blur and you don't really know what's happened. Um, so I think you've made, I'm not saying that, I think you've made the right choice. Like, there's clearly, golf's an extremely hard game, and there's, you look at the percentage, of, like, they say, like, what is it? Even to get to my handicap of, of scratch or plus one, they say it's like less than 1% of people will, will get there. So mm -hmm. to, to get to that level of golf, Weirdo level. Weirdo level. Weirdo level. Yeah, <laughs> yeah like it's, it's, it's a lot of time, it's a lot of dedication. There's a lot of, I think, like natural feel in the game of golf. Like some people have a lot more natural feel than others, but it's still a lot of hard work and a lot of, uh, it's, not, it's not a free ride, is it? And like for people who have just turned pro and you, like I know you're obviously sponsored by Shrixen now, which is fantastic. Like you've got like full sponsorship with them, which is brilliant. But like, you aren't living the high lives, you pros. No, I mean... Tilly, bless her, sitting on the other side of the camera, your partner there. You two aren't going on holiday every other week and stuff <laughs> like and just like rolling around in all this cash. No, as you become she's thinking to herself, though, not yet. Not yet. Uh, yeah. Ron, Ron is... <laughs> Tilly's playing the long game. Yeah. Yeah. Tilly's playing the Tilly long game. Tilly is it's an investment. You, Ron yeah. is the investment. Yeah. And you know what? We're happy to be part of that ride as well. <laughs> but in the first instance, whilst you're at this stage now, playing Alps Tour and stuff, don't get me wrong, Like the prize money isn't like to be sniffed at if you win in these events. So like, it's, it's good money for quote-unquote, not just saying it, playing golf, but, like, it's not easy to win these events. It costs no, a lot no. of money to go to these events. And, yeah. like, in and amongst that, unless you've got fat bags coming in from sponsors, left, right and centre, you boys aren't living a high life. No, no. At all. No, I mean, you have to... There's a lot of... Well, you say it's sacrifices, but it's not really, like, at the end of the day, for me now, like, it's my job, really, isn't it? So, I think... Still I mean, I enjoy that, though. Yeah. But... Um, it's like the sacrifice is there, but you've got to, there's, it's like every athlete, there's always things you've got to, I guess, put to the side and you've mm. just got to concentrate because I think there's so many good players now as well. Yeah, like nice. there's, there's so many good golfers. I think in the last, what, 15, 10 years, mm -hmm. just the standard is just, mm -hmm rose so high. So I would still say it's a sacrifice though, because you could go and get your, £35,000 a year admin job and you and Tilly could go on holiday two, three times a year with that money and you could do that sort of stuff and you could progress through that way. Whereas, like, at the moment, off, off of money that you earn from golf, like, you wouldn't be going on just, like, family vacays, you and Tilly, like, three or four times a year. Out of that. So, like, there's sacrifice being made there, there's sacrifice being made from Tilly on that part as well. But, um, yeah, it's not... That was a big eye-opener for us when we went to the clutch and that, wasn't it? Like, because yeah. that was the yeah. first time I've been around, like, feeder yeah. tour golf. Yeah. yeah. Um, and, like... We were quite, we were not shocked and like, yeah. I think it was more like obviously, you know, we, we work hard and we work hard in our life and we say it and like we can afford nicer things. But yeah, we looked around and we were like, these boys are the best in England, so the best of the pros in yeah. England, if mm -hmm. you will. Some of them obviously best in Europe and so on and so on. And yeah, like some of them looked like they needed a bag revamp and stuff, yeah. but like they couldn't. And, and hard, they're yeah. paying a lot of yeah. money to compete every weekend. Yeah, they they travel up and down the country, they try and stay together, but... I suppose it's comparable to a normal job though in the sense that like where you might get up earlier and do extra bookings or I might do an extra shift. It if is, they go to the range, it's just unpaid. You're, yeah. No, but it's, it's, it's unpaid reason, over time. No, the reason it's not comparable though is because we don't have to pay to go to our job. N not as much, no. Just like traveling. But yeah, yeah, but they've got travel yeah. expenses yeah, and stuff. Yeah, yeah. They're having, yeah, having yeah. to pay, the boys it, on the clutch are having to pay £500 to an enter an event. It's, 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 it's yeah. almost like unpaid. To try and win We've money. Tried to try and yeah. win your money. Yeah. You don't go into work, you don't pay 500 quid for your week's I'd work say, and oh, try and earn your money back. If I work well tonight, yeah. yeah. And I, I get that. And it's like, obviously, so you boys is more like unpaid over time. Because if you then decide, oh, I've got to work on my wedges tonight, I'll do three hours work. Because it is your job. That's yeah, technically yeah. three hours unpaid overtime, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. I think there's a lot, there's a lot that people don't see as well because. So, like, the, the average person sitting at home looks at the leaderboard and they think, oh, like, he's having a crap day or whatever. They don't realise that, oh, he was in Spain a few days ago and he's had to now get a flight. Like, especially on, like, the Challenge Tour, say, mm -hmm. you think, oh, he's got a last-minute invite. They go all he's over the going, world. He's not even having a practice round. Yep. He's fl flying to India, not mm -hmm. having a practice round. He's teeing off. Oh, and he's playing crap. Mm -hmm. And you don't see the fact that he's been travelling for 10 hours, doing no. this, doing that. Like there's a lot playing of that on Bermuda grass don't going see it. to now playing on this type of grass. Yeah. Putting on greens that are rolling at, at nine and now he's putting <laughs> yeah. on greens and rolling at thirteen. Yeah. All within like a couple of days of each other. Yeah, going to get your practice round. And in. I think travelling's the most 
like exhausting thing ever as as mad as it sounds like Until you when get you your little pj boy and we all fly around on our pj yeah, yeah. <laughs> and our content just goes unless you have a yeah. private <laughs> unless you have a private jet yeah that's yeah. all right yeah you'll, you'll get that we've we've we'll seen something there, and uh, we've aligned ourselves with you quite nicely yeah <laughs> um one question that i want to ask all of the professional golfers that we get onto this podcast because i would be interested in seeing everyone's different perspective on this is like we just said a minute ago there are so many good golfers now in the amateur scene that you see that like Ludwig Aberg, ridiculous amateur career, turns pro, going to be a world beater. Like there's the, like Nick Dunlap, who's won recently. Like he's only recently turned pro, yeah. I think. Um, one as an amateur, didn't he? They're, they're, yeah, one as an amateur. So. There's been a few, few sort of early success stories of people turning pro recently and um, sort of like pushing on, but which I'll, I want to talk about a little bit further as well because I don't really think these players are amateurs like Ludwig Aberg, yeah, yeah. but when he died the time he turned pro, he wasn't an amateur <laughs> golfer. Let's be serious. Mm-hmm. He is an amateur, but he's getting coached more and he's, he's in a professional setting. Anyway, the digression on that for a minute. What is it that you think makes the difference between why someone turns out and then starts to play and do really well and progress into their career and make it to the PJ Tour, whatever it is they want to be playing on, and just have a really good golfing career. And why is it that other people... Because there's no, the reason I say is there's no reason why for you, your golfing ability, your talent, what you can do, etc., etc. why is it that only so little people actually make it all the way? When, and when at 21 years old, you put, up, put, all, you put all of you in a, in a 36-hole tournament, you can all beat each other. Yeah. Why, do people, why are so, people so much better sometimes? I think... Well, there's loads of reasons, I think. So, firstly, obviously, you're traveling a lot. And within amateur golf, there's a lot of... You're within teams and you're you're not used to being on your own. Mm-hmm. Whereas you go away, like, say, there's there's quite a few guys that... They'll be in the teams, blah, blah, blah. They'll be amazing players. They'll go and turn pro and do nothing. Yeah. Because they're not used to... Whether it's, like, trying to, like, book stuff, help book stuff yourself or traveling around like going to different countries like a lot of the amateur stuff as well you maybe play top guys are playing like eight events a year ten events a year some people hardly even play that much you turn pro then you're playing what 30 events a year traveling around people might not be used to it and maybe they 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 go up the road and they don't know how to just get it around a golf course whereas they prepare for them like eight events a year Mm -hmm. and everything's perfect and it's the same and then when you're a pro say you have two or three events where you're playing crap Mm -hmm. how do you turn around and kind of say right i need to like figure out how to do something but i'm going to an event next week i can't just sit at home and practice for a for a month or make a massive swing change or something yeah like you can't there's a lot of that and i think i think you've it comes down to like professionalism as well so you see a lot of guys from what I've seen, right? So who would be very professional, like they go along to these amateur events, like one guy might be better than this guy. So he's very professional. He, I don't know, goes to bed early, eats the right food, does everything correctly, like you would as a tour pro. And then there's guys that go to an event, mess about, eat the wrong food, go to bed late, don't wake up, don't do the stretching, don't go to the gym, don't do whatever. And then, but then say they go and win the, win the event, right? Mm-hmm. This, this guy who's like doing everything wrong, completely wrong. Mm-hmm. They go and win the event and you think, oh, your man's crap. But, and then give it five years, he catches that up to him. That consistency catches, catches up. He catches up to him and mm-hmm. then that's it. I think that's one of the biggest things what I've seen where you see guys and you think he's not professional enough. He's not gonna, he just can't get there because there's guys on the PJ Tour that are doing every single step right compared to this guy who's messing about and not doing the right things. I think that's a massive part in it, personally. I would and say not having the right attitude as well. Like people have bad attitudes and they just get away with it in amateur golf. But that because maybe 50% have a bad attitude and 50% have a great attitude. So you can kind of get away with it. Balance it out. Whereas yeah. as soon as you turn pro, right 100 percent of the players at that tournament wherever you go whether it's a clutch whatever it might be they have a great attitude 100 percent of them because they want to that's what they want to do and that's their job mm-hmm. and some people realize that too late and then it's too late i, I would say it. on that uh 
golf and with many sports, because obviously we've said like how much more competitive it is now and how many more pros there is. I think everyone's taking things more serious though, aren't they? So like everybody's trying to become yeah. a finely tuned athlete mm-hmm. now. Yeah. So like I, I noticed it, I've noticed it with you, like you do I'm try not. and eat healthy. And like I was just aware of another lad that Reece Stewart and like he was very conscious of what he ate as well. And I think it's because like you say, because it's so competitive mm-hmm. now and you are all against each other. People are trying to do the 1% a bit more than what they've done. Say you turned pro 10 years ago. Yeah, I yeah. don't think you'd be the same as what you are now. Like maybe you would eat different, like you say. One, because there wasn't like people weren't educated in that, but like I just yeah. feel like it wasn't as competitive. But you yeah. are, are all trying to do the 1% and outdo each other, aren't you? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, 100%. I mean, it's like if you're not doing these little things, it's just trying to get that 1% better. And if you're not doing these little things, like you're just going to fall back. Yeah. I just think there's only so far. I, I believe there's only so far you can get with just like talent. Cause you're no, all I mean, and don't get me wrong, it'll get you far. Yeah. It'll, like get you far it'll get you far, but will it get you, is yeah. it your potential? Like, yeah, 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 this yeah. guy might be unbelievable, yeah. but he's doing everything wrong. Yeah. So, okay, he might win on the PGA Tour mm-hmm. or whatever, mm-hmm. but he Not going to have the longevity. Been, he could yeah. have been, it's like yeah, yeah, yeah. he could have won four majors. He yeah, could have yeah, yeah. done who is Who is a victim of that that we would know who's a famous golfer, do we think? That's... Who's like it's derailed? Really like who's like? Yeah. Oh, they really didn't reach their potential. Is there like an example of that? Like or like there's like like Don't their like health. Like, like, out, John like, Daly jumps to mind, but he done loads in the game of golf. Like yeah, but then could yeah, he but have done? How much could he have done? Yeah, what yeah. could he have done? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm saying like he could have been like Phil Mickelson or something. Yeah, mm. yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like yes, yeah. maybe Daly would be maybe a good. Because yeah. then you look at Tiger Woods, like he was doing everything. Well, he's doing yeah. yeah, like in the nineties when it wasn't yeah, a thing, yeah. but he was doing everything, and then look what happened there. Obviously, mm. he was I think outrageously it's talented. But different then, isn't it? But um, is there anyone that's like that was like think. went off the rails and you're like, oh fucking hell, if he didn't do that, do you know what he could have actually been like really good? Well, it could it could be an not example, really good, but an example could be like Shane Lowry and Beef and that. Like, are they doing everything right to be an athlete? Could Shane Lowry Shane, have one Shane more? Lowry's hands are a joke. Yeah, but like, could yeah. You, could would you, his hands be that good if he yeah. wasn't like a little bit on the chunky no, side? But then like, would every everything of his? Because you're saying about being an athlete, so maybe beef and that. Would he have got injured if he was more athletic? Like these are. That's like the only example I can think of. If is the out of shape guys, I can't think of like a wrong the, what? the out of shape guys. I can't think of a guy with a wrong attitude that's on the tour. Must be one with an attitude. That's yeah, like, yeah. Because like, you get it in football all the time, like. Like Balotelli was a pain in the ass. Yeah. yeah. Like, yeah. but like, how could how good like could he have been? Probably, well, yeah, you know he was I mean? good. But he's yeah. good, good. But he's but not like. Yeah, he didn't have the. Yeah. Could have been Ronaldo or whatever. Yeah. Like you don't know, do you? And like or that's Messi the thing. What would Ronaldo have been if he didn't have that dedication? Yeah. Probably not. Not that. Probably. But then again, apparently, less, Messi is a lazy bastard in training and stuff. Yeah. But he's just out of this world talent. But what could Messi have been if he had the work ethic of yeah. Ronaldo? An alien. Yeah. And it's different yeah. for different people, though, isn't it? As well, like some people can, if you over practice or overdo everything, you might just get worse. Yeah. Because some people have different attitudes towards it. I think. Mm. Um, do you do everything? If you're being honest with us right now, do you feel no, like you do everything you can right no, now? No, I don't. Do I think I do everything I can? Or do no. you leave a little something in the locker? There's definitely. So let's say I don't do enough. Let's say hundred percent. Like, I don't feel like I do enough. Okay, so no, no, I'm very honest. I, would agree I like with that. that. Like, let's, if let's I'm just, being honest. Yeah, that's good, and that's what we want. So let's just say Tiger Woods, hundred percent. You know, we yeah. read them facts, and we're like, he rolled five hundred putts in a day, four footers. That like extreme yeah. stats. So he's hundred percent. Yeah. Where do you genuinely feel like? No, let's not put him as hundred percent because that's like that's obscene. Let's put. But it just then like, again, he's practicing in Florida. So, yeah, I know. Yeah. No, I know. I know there like, should be excuses, but like... Let's use English summer time where yeah, Woodbridge yeah. is pure. Yeah. Woodbridge is nice. Yeah. And like you've got all the practice facilities you want. All right. Like you've got the little... You've got this, the nine old course you can play on. You've got the 18 you can go on. They've got the little short game area. You can do some the bits and you've got nice putting green. They're big putting green outside the front. So all the facilities are there for you to grind. Yeah. Let's put like your normal PGA Tour person who puts in four or five hours a day of practice every day. They're in the gym for two hours a day. They're doing their stretches and stuff. That's a 10. Where are you on a one to ten scale, and where do you lack? What if you're saying? Well, just the overall five picture. hour practice a yeah. day, two hour range yeah. sessions. Well, for me, like, I'll if I'm up in the summer and I'm doing like a practice day at Woodbridge, I'm doing probably three hours on the range. I would say. Right. But am I doing it every single day? Probably not because it's mid season and like doing that every single day do i think it's gonna like help me am i overdoing it or what i don't know what is the right answer to that 
I don't know, there's about a million answers, isn't there? Where, <laughs> do, you th- where do you think you could do where do you think you could do more? Like, it doesn't have to be golf, it could be diet, um, it could be training, it could be if you're being critical of yourself. Gym. The boy's never in the gym. Yeah, I, I would say I'd say no, gym. And we're not saying you need to be benching. We've had no, this yeah, you're never in the gym. Yeah, Portugal. I don't do I don't think I do enough, but like All the boys on tour yeah, are in the gym now. I'm not I'm mm. I don't do it every single day, but I do I don't say I stretch. I wouldn't say I stretch every single day, yeah. but I do try to. But what does and that do mean, sh- though, Ron? Yeah, what do you mean like, try I don't to? Like, I don't, you mean, don't yeah. like that. Don't we, like we just don't try mean. to. You know, we try and so we're getting smiles from Tilly, look, because mm. she knows that there's more that could be done, don't yeah. you, Tilly? No, there definitely is. I'm not saying there isn't. I know that, like, it's just hard for me to get it into my head. Yeah. yeah. Like, how. Or where me you were trying to that. go to the gym, it, it, it is hard when you go away and stuff. Sometimes yeah. it's like yeah, but it's not me- the problem is Ron. Gym. It's trying to just put the effort into like yeah, do it. and it's not like and gym. I, I I would love to go to the gym every day, right? Like in my head, the idea to that to me is great. Yeah. I'd love to be in great shape, have a nice chest, be like Westy, muscular, and all this sort of stuff. Yeah. But I'm not that, I can't be, like, we have, I have obviously a lot of other stuff that I do, yeah, but I, yeah. I could still, if I wanted to, fit that hour in a day, every day. And actually, I'm going to try, Michael. I'm going to try and get back you into it. You go through phases. You, but, you, like, you don't, like, you're not going to see the, the benefit of that. I wouldn't see, if I went back to the gym now, I'm not going to start to see my body to tone up, do all this sort of yeah, stuff for five, yeah. six months. Yeah, yeah. You're not, like, the, the, the hard thing, I think, for an athlete at the start is, like, if you're not going in there every yeah. day for five days a week, every single week, and doing your shit, yeah. In six months' time, you'd look back and be like, I genuinely think you'd look back and be like, fuck me, that work was like so good after yeah. six months. I think like, I think you've got to gradually, for me, like I've not really gone to the gym. Like I've not been like a gym guy. Do you know what I mean? So Bro. I think, I've, yeah, I think I've got to, if I'm going to do it, for me, I'll go like three days a week, right? Mm-hmm. And I'll do it for like two months and then I'll just like stop. Yeah. And like, you kind of don't really get into that. You do get into a routine and it's great. But for me as well, it's like one minute I'm doing it and then I'm like, right, I've got to go and play a tournament. So then I come back after that event and I'm like, I don't know, I just like stop going. Do you know what I mean? Because yeah. I've stopped yeah. going at the event. Whereas mm-hmm. to be fair, last week when I was out in Portugal, um, went down to the beach every day, went in the sea, did stuff like that, just like, because it's you, good. It sounds like you just had a bit of a vacation in between. Yeah, it's lovely. <laughs> Lay down on the beach. Yeah. <laughs> just went to sunbathe for a little bit and just no, went for a swim in the sea. No, but it's good, for your, it's good for your muscles, yeah. isn't it? Going in the sea and doing that sort of stuff. All the boys together. And doing a little workout, little yeah. workout on the beach. Yeah, you know what I mean? Sure. So, right yeah. Um, yeah, but I think I can definitely get into more of like a routine of doing it. It's 100%. like, I do do it, but it's like on and off. Yeah. It would be on and off. Um, then again, like it's so hard for me to get it in my head. Is it going to help me just get the ball around the golf course? It will. And less shots. So. I know. I know. All the best in the yeah. world don't do it for no reason. Yeah, and I get yeah. what you're thinking. And we had this dispute, and we're not we're not digging you out at all. We're just trying to pick no, your no, brain. But like, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking your element of your game is very good at short short game, very good at wedges, very good putter. Yeah. You just normally, unless putter. you've got the ratsman, hit it straight. Yeah, and like, yeah. all right, okay, where you <laughs> could improve is like, hit it further. So you're thinking yeah. like, can I live with that? But do I need to hit it further? No, no, no. no but I'm, yeah, I'm you, it wouldn't do you any harm. No, it's not going to do you any harm. You're aligning the gym with that and you're is thinking, it? maybe I don't need to hit it further. So, But the gym doesn't necessarily mean I can now go to the gym, I'm now going to hit the ball further. It's just, yeah, I tried yeah, to say it's more functional. It's more like, yeah, keeping your body in like, the horrible lies, the horrible stances, like Mm-hmm. the fourth day of walking I'm more like yeah, just, yeah. I'm not saying yeah. like say that's a big thing. one like yeah. when like because like functional you, you've got four day events that yeah. you're planning like oh, walking yeah. the golf course if it's like a de- if it's a demanding walk if you're physically fit hitting yeah. 200 golf hitting shots hitting 200 well more, more yeah. 200, yeah. 220 230 I hope it'd be 200, yeah. 200 well, well I'm saying golf I'm <laughs> excluding, excluding, nice. excluding putts yeah 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 excluding yeah. putts but like you, if you're in like a physical condition to be able to just manage that load over four days it's only going to be when you get to that third and fourth day I think that's when you'd start to recognise it and you'd just start to recognise it with like, just like, just feeling more balanced, stronger, less fatigued. You would, I, th- I do think you'd see a slight increase in distance. It's not that you, I don't think you need it. You're not someone like, for your size, you're what, five foot nine, you claim. Um, <laughs> ten in his foot joys. Yeah, ten in his foot joys, in his prems. 
Like, you don't tickle it. Like, you, you hit it out there 300 still with driver, but hitting it 310 or 315 is not going to hurt anyone, is it? Yeah, but is it going to make a difference? It won't. Detri- no, because, like, you're just, you'll just yeah, be more hitting, functional. Me hitting, just, a, me hitting a pitching wedge or an iron iron, what's the difference? Well, you're, if you went over the course of the year... It's not going to make a difference. Wrong mind. No, so liar. Course, That's disagree. absolute it's bullshit. It's not going to make a difference to my... So if you had, like, a shot... A if you had a shot, like, one of them shot scopes on your golf clubs, yeah? Yeah. And you went for a full season on the Alps I could hit my pitching wedge further away than my nine iron, iron. No, just listen to me. <laughs> just, uh, this, is our, this is our podcast. Let me talk. <laughs> Hear the <laughs> um, out. If you put one of them, whatever it is, shot scope or whatever it's called, yeah, yeah. Arcos on your golf clubs, yeah, or if you've done it on, if you're just saying oh, I'm going to chip a, I could chip a nine iron one thirty, or I'll hit a four pitching wedge one thirty, yeah. I'm just saying, from 130 yards, with in most circumstances, you're going to hit your pitching wedge. Well, 125, you're going to hit your pitching wedge, yeah. Yeah, one thirty-five. If you looked at your <laughs> 135, if you looked at your stats, yeah, week, from it? when you had pitch image in your hand to when you had nine on in your hand and you put your proximity to the hole. Yeah, there's been no difference. Yeah, chat shit. You're <laughs> such a liar. No the thing is, You're when such we, a Ron liar. will do this thing to me and you. It's like yeah. when we, I mean, we're sitting there as like 30 year old slouches. So like, yeah. very, we're like digging you out. But like, no, it's all right. yeah, it's, fine. it's so where, 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 what, at what point would you see the difference in? Eight iron? Seven iron? When yeah, pitching wedge to eight iron, I would see a difference. One club, I wouldn't see much difference. So from from seven iron to six iron, you wouldn't see a difference? Oh, Not really, no. Start to fit. Yeah, Liar. Yeah, see, I don't Liar. agree with that. I, if I gave you an aiming five circle... Five foot is a lot of foot. Three, two foot. No, nah, more. Three foot. More. Yeah. I, I don't five foot. What'd you, hit, what'd you hit seven iron? 175 stock? Nah. 180? About 170. Depends on the weather. No wind. Right. No wind, 20 degrees. 180 probably, yeah. Yeah, 175. 175 Oh, I've, I've always, I've caddied for you a few times and I'd like to think I'm the man on the bag for you, the right man yeah. on the bag for you. If we had the conditions, I'd be telling you to pull seven iron from 175 if the conditions are right. Anyway, so you're saying and your your six iron is like your 185, 190. Yeah, 190 you've got like 15 yard gaps. Yeah. So you're telling me if there's a par three that's 175 and you've got seven iron yeah. in your hand and there's a par three that's 190 and you've got six iron in your hand, and five I gave foot. yourself, I gave yourself a hundred balls. You, honestly, you're such yeah. a that fucking liar. liar. You're such a liar. That is a terrible. Don't look at Tilly for support. She can't help you over there. <laughs> you're here with the lions. Okay, yeah, the lions. Right. I get what you're saying, but the further up you go, the like the further away you are going to hit it. So this is what I'm saying. Like a pitch wedge and a nine iron is no, not going to make any difference. Fifteen yards. A seven iron, distance. a seven iron, and a six iron. Yeah, it probably will make a bit more of a difference. All right, we'll go the other way. So you got pitch wedge in your hand. It's one thirty. Yeah. We're saying what we're saying one thirty. Yeah. You got your fifty degree wedge in your hand, which is one fifteen. Yeah. There's going to be not much difference oh, with them clubs. God. So annoying. He he? There's not. Anyway, moving on we, because it's just, not yeah, be just much moving. different. He will never move on. Agree moving with on. Us now. Yeah, can't be wrong, Rondo. Let's have a look because I actually have some that's, questions and I want to just see. There won't be much difference. Before we move on to that, um, just uh, would you say putting is the strongest part of your game? Yes. No. no. I would say it's very good, but it's inconsistent, and I streaky. think it's streaky. But yeah. my short game is a lot more consistent and better. As I, in I short think. game is in pitching and chipping. Yeah, 50 yards and in, so yeah. 40 yards and in. I feel like my, yeah, chipping bunker play mm-hmm. is a lot more consistent than my putting. My putting's yeah. streaky, but my chipping's always good. Mm. Like, don't like to big myself up, but... We like we like that here. Yeah. Boys, just giving you another heads up. Royal Norwich, who kindly hosted us for today's golf and podcast, have got some fantastic on-site facilities and accommodation for you boys to stay at. Come and visit, play some golf, have some food, experience one of their golfing days, which can include morning use of their six-hole golf course, followed by some lunch, some range balls, and then an afternoon game on their 18-hole championship golf course. For more information, if you want to head over to their website, they have all of their packages listed on there. You can pick from just 18 holes, from just lunch, from just six holes practice, from using the facilities. There's a great country club vibe at this golf course. And again, a real championship golf club, which will test anyone's golfing ability. Head over to their website, check it out, pick one of the deals. They've got some fantastic winter green fee offers on as well, as well at the moment. Get yourself involved, boys. Back to the podcast. So what you'd say, short game is your... is your Yeah, 100%. Yeah. yeah. I think I'll, so. I would probably agree. Yeah. What would you say the strongest part of Westy's game is when you've seen him play well? Uh, played, he played well in know, Port- he played know, well in Portugal, didn't he? You know played good in Portugal. Yeah. I would say he's chipping. I didn't actually well, no, you can't that. just base it on one shot that we yeah, see. Yeah, how that <laughs> shot? <laughs> no, he's had like three of them that were a yeah. joke. They were no, unreal. But, but the thing is with my short game, it's either, it's like it's, it's here or here. Yeah. There's no like here. 
I don't really have a good point. I no, no. I would, I, was say, I would say it's your like... I don't actually think I have a strong point. I think your pitching's pretty good. I, I just think, I it, yeah, I think it's all just mellow at the minute. And it just... All the mellowness ties well, together. Iron, iron play. Do you see what I mean? Iron, short iron play, uh, I would go with. Yeah, so I, mean, the I think that's the best part of your game. Because I asked you yesterday, all. didn't I? And I said his wedges, and I'd agree that his wedges is his best part of his game. Would you agree with that? I think your driving's good. I think your driving's today. Yeah, we're all going off today. Game. Yeah, I know, but in, I think in general it's good because no, it's the same no. shot all the time no, as well. No, no, no. And what no, is that no, shot? No, no. A draw? <laughs> no, no, no. I just don't know. Because when it's going bad, it's, it can be real ratty. Yeah, but really? I mean, yeah, I mean, like you know, it can be no, but I just went through a bit of a weird phase with driver, like where I was just like I couldn't stop overdrawing it. Like I've never really, I've always been a decent driver of the ball, but I just went yeah. through this this year. Well, last year it would have been twenty twenty three. Just went through a bit of a rough patch mm. with it. Yeah, like, like where you were aiming right. Yeah, the tee. yeah, yeah. And yeah. I think well, that obviously don't help, does it? When no. when you have a problem where you're starting to overturn it you and you try to more. compensate yeah, yeah. by aiming further, it just yeah, highlights the good, problem. Yeah. And then you hit a good one straight, and it's yeah, just like, it's just like straight, shit up. and you're like, oh no. <laughs> You'd say driving though. Because like, I would, I said I think myself, very my, good, yeah. my short game, or short irons is pretty good usually. Okay, yeah, I think you definitely need to improve in your putting. Yeah, I'd, I would I'd say. agree. But can greens you just, greens. Can, yeah, but mm. can you just just for the people that are watching this or listening to this in your car on Spotify? By the way, this podcast is available to listen on Spotify and um, YouTube. We said in the last podcast, let us know if you want us to put it on any other platforms. We haven't at the moment, but if there's any suggestions or anything you'd like to see, it let us know. We can do that. Um, but what was I just about to say that, yeah, I get pelted uh, in YouTube videos and people think I'm a terrible putter of the golf ball. Terrible putter? Yeah, no, yeah, not yeah, terrible. Yes. Just don't make a lot. I would say yeah. you're a good putter in the sense because you obviously play <laughs> golf at a good level, so you won't be a bad putter. You just don't make enough one putts, does he? That's it. Mm. Just doesn't roll enough in. No. Yeah, you don't roll enough in. And you know, hate you read the greens funny though. I think it's more your reading of the greens. I don't think it's you to don't do like with your actual putting. You don't like my stroke either. No, I, I think it's it. too quick and like jabby. Yeah, too jabby. But the thing, yeah. the thing is as well though, with me and Ash, and with, this is one thing we're both guilty of. We don't take any practice swings. We don't do any like. We don't have to. We don't do any like. No, no, I'm not saying that. But we don't do any like fill drills before. No, we don't. We're because everything is on camera. Yeah, we yeah. play at a very like. Yeah, turn talk, up and yeah. go to the ball, hit the ball. We don't do any like we have nothing going on pre ball, like none of us do we? No, we talk, we turn. Ron Dog does. Ron Dog still goes through his routine. Yeah, which I like. Yeah, I like that about you. But we don't. If you notice, we just yeah. literally talk, pull mm. the club, and just hit the ball. Yeah, something maybe we need to address together, buddy. I would. Have, I would. If someone asked me what your strongest part of your game is, I'd have the hands down said putting. Me. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Your putting's I'll, a joke. Yeah, I would agree. It's just inconsistent. Yeah, but well, that's but, um, all it is. Yeah, but it, when it's on, it is. It oh, yeah, that's what I mean. That's yeah. what I mean. I've like never it seen, is on. I've never seen like, anything like it. I don't miss. But it can be like just iffy at times, you know. Like I'll tell you a story consistent. I haven't told you, right? So um, on good greens, on Boxing Day, uh, Go on, Mr. Paul Mullin, Father Mullin, Father GS, uh, fancy the game of golf, yeah. And obviously it was like quite wet over Christmas. So I contacted the one person at the golf course that I know would be in good condition at that point, Woodbridge. Mr. Aaron Edwards Hills, um, and asked if we could come and play Woodbridge with him, which he nicely accepted. Yeah. Myself, my dad, uh, my dad's pal Paul, and Ron Dog, and Ron Dog had one of those days on the put on the on the putting surface. Hold everything, hold it from everywhere. My dad's swearing at him as we go round, as Paul does. <laughs> so he was giving it. He yeah, knew the saying, what was the, the weird like we're yeah. doing. Stupidly, they agreed to it. It was my dad and his pal Paul versus me and Aaron. We just gave him shots off their handicap, wherever it was, wasn't it? Um, and Ron Dog was just binning it from absolutely everywhere. Just having one of those days. Um, and my dad, on the way back, got back into the car. My dad was like, I've never seen anything like that. He was like, it was fucking freaky. Actually. No, it is. It was weird, mate. But everything but you looked at went in the fucking hole. Yeah. It is bizarre. So it has to be the strongest part of your game because like, when it's on, if all of the parts of your game is on, the putting is the one where you're like, that's the thing with you. Like, like I said, with Josh, I think he's great. He hits it a mile. He's got really good driver of the golf ball and stuff. Yeah. Yours is like, you, you drive the golf ball great, you've got good iron play, your wedges are, are awesome. But the ones that like, when soon as someone says to me like, run dog and that, I'm like, fuck me. Like when I watched you around Val de Lobo putting, never seen yeah, anything like it. Yeah. My, I do find... Like my pace putting is always yeah. very good. Yes. Yeah. Like that that's one thing f for me, probably in my putting that is very consistent is when I'm hole. thirty feet away, it's always scaring close the to the hole or tap scaring it. it or tapping or every it. Every time. 
But then holing out is iffy at times. Mm. And maybe sometimes I don't hole enough sort of like 10 to 15 footers. But at the end of the day, that How many should you to... hole? What's the PJ Talk percentage what? on that? 15 what, feet? Like 15 feet. 10%? Probably no, no, no. Higher? No, I think it is. No, a bit higher, higher, yeah. Be 20 odd percent, I'd say. From 15 feet? I think so, yeah. 30%? On maybe? harder greens, aren't it? Not 30% from 15 feet. It's not harder high. greens, but no, it would be. I reckon it's 30% from JK, 15 feet. JK, JK. 50% eight feet. feet. Can you just Google? Sure I PGA don't really tour, know, but... PGA Tour putt make percentage, and it will just bring up all of the feats, hopefully. I think you'd, you make, you'd be a bit hard on yourself there. I don't think yeah. it would be... I think yeah. it'd be less. I don't think it'd be 30%. Uh, 2022 from 15 feet. Uh, what did you do what, it from? What, that's, so 40 try, yeah, so it's 30. Oh, okay, 30, you might be right. 15. What about 15 feet? It goes down a lot, though. When it, as soon as it gets over... Yeah, I mean, that's double the distance, like, actually. Like, that's another down. 50% yeah. on. I think it would yeah. go down severely. I would have said it would have been about 15, 20 The thing is, greens on the PJ so Tour are unbelievable as well. So, like, yeah, that's going to help. hard also. Fucking putting combo. They're, 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 they're what, putting on the best greens in the world. What you'd find with... Obviously, I've not played on the PJ Tour, so I can't really call it. But when will you? From, like, oh, watching you not? it. When will you be on the PJ Tour? <laughs> don't know. We'll see. How many years? don't know. Just say it. No. <laughs> no you, won't do that. You, you won't get that out of him. No, right. Um. Anyway, what was I saying? Oh, yeah, you'll find out holing out. Go on. 30% between 11 and 15 feet. 30%, you confirmed. He knows his stuff. Not, not bad. Not bad. It was a test. Did you write we the knew article? We knew it was was that on Aaron's Instagram or was that on, yeah. on We knew Google? it was 30%. The, um, you'll find out PJ Tour holing out's a lot easier than it's when the pace pattern is like 30, 40 feet is tough because the greens are so quick. Mm. Whereas six to 10 footers are probably miles easier because mm. the greens are unbelievable. Mm -hmm. So like, it's all about just the pace then. It's mm -hmm. just trying to get the pace right. And they've got a caddy also helping them with every yeah. single part, like who knows yeah, the break yeah. on all of those greens. And as well, I've said it all the time, they don't lose a golf ball. No. Out no, there. No, they can't Forget putting the stuff. Yeah. They can't lose a golf ball. The rough has been trodden down in 90% <laughs> of the places yeah. that they think you've got spotters on every single hole. Public. The only time on the PJ Tour you lose a golf yeah. ball is you've put it in the piss. Yes. Yeah, literally, yeah. It's yeah. facts. That's it. The ball is always fun. Strongly agree. Yeah, yeah. strong lab Bible, strongly <laughs> agree. Definitely. Um, I, I have a question on. here. Um, uh, just while we're touching on sort of PJ Tour and the states which we've touched on, is that the aim? You want to mo obviously the PJ Tour is predominantly in the US, and then would you like to relocate? Is that like the aim? You want to I'd full be time probably live in the state? No, because then my next question actually incorporates us. Oh, good. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, but it, but put him on the spot. But but, but, <laughs> but is the, it, so first question is that the aim? You want to obviously probably I get like obviously PJ Tour is the aim, so that that goes without saying. Yeah. I'm not gonna bore people and ask you that question. You're a professional golfer, so you want to be on that. And then, do you want to fully? probably more than likely yourself and Tills relocate and probably have a condo in your state and that's it. You're like yeah, a, an American boy then. 100%, yeah. That is the end. Like in this 100%. American boy. Okay, because then my next question is, when you have that full access, what course are you most looking forward to taking me and Ash from? <laughs> yeah. I don't know, TPC Sawgrass or something like yeah, that. Shout. That'd be mint, wouldn't shout. it? Shout. Yeah. Florida. Shout. Do you reckon so you put it in the piss on 17? JK, write that probably. down. Really? No. It's got nah, not on 17. I wouldn't on 17. Maybe 18. Yeah. <laughs> well, is it walk down the right on 18? Left. Left. Oh, yeah, you're in trouble. You'd you'd have a lovely little draw going yeah. round the water. Yeah. If he, made, if he made it, there'd be three very happy people in this room, wouldn't there? There would, yeah. Well, would you, would Four. you happily relocate? Four happy. Yeah. Four. yeah. You'd yeah. be all over that. Yeah. Fair play. Tills is playing the game. We Look, we know. She, she saw it She's early. Her dad's, her dad's American. Oh, yeah, he is. Yeah. He lives out there, doesn't yeah. he? Actually, yeah. Yeah. Maybe we'll be. <laughs> and he actually lives with. near Florida or in Florida. Nah, Tennessee. Oh. Huh. Oh. Okay. Maybe we've invested in the wrong friend. Yeah. <laughs> Doing um, U.S. Open qualifying this year. Are you really? Mm -hmm. Where oh, is right. that? Tennessee. Tennessee. When are you there? That's where I'm doing it, huh? When? April. Nice. Yeah. Don't they do U.S. Open qualifying in the U.K.? They do Walton Heath, but like, obviously, I have to go to first stage, don't I? Right. So okay. I'm gonna go out there for a week. With Till as well, so that'd be nice. Till was on the bag. Uh, don't know about that. No. <laughs> Would that result in like bickers and stuff? No, nah, it wouldn't, because she doesn't really know golf, so mm. yeah. it'd just be Carrie and yeah. Just give me. She's that been stick. on the bag before. She's got a good record, actually. Was she? Better record than you. Oh. <laughs> Where did you finish? <laughs> huh? Where did you finish? What? I think it was about sixth when I or something. Yeah. Sixth place. Where did we finish? Don't know. 
Well, you made nine on the last hole, which didn't help the overall... <laughs> 18th or something? Overall standings. Could have be been 18? a little bit better. But, um, uh, do you think, Ron Dog, Go on. that I could turn pro? Well, yeah, of course you can turn pro. And have any chance at winning any event? Winning? I don't know. No, no, don't say, look, listen, we're well, all you want an friends, actual, like... Just be serious. What kind of event? Clutch, Clutch tour event. Or Clutch TP event. Tour, like one of the Clutch little... Clutch event. Tier Clutch one event. tier one. Do I think you could win a cl- clutch tier one event? Yeah. Two dayer. Two dayer. Mhm. From the way you played today, probably yeah. You think I could? That was like a really kind way of saying no. Did you feel that? Oh no, I, I, I think I don't no, think you'd be shy in I don't saying know, no because if I think maybe you would win one like next year if you turn pro, the, the answer would be no. But give it two or three years, I feel like you could win one. Yeah, because you. By improving my golf game or just by playing as a pro and experiencing tournament golf? Yeah, just that. Yeah, what you just said. What one? A or B? (laughs) (laughs) B. B. (laughs) So just getting tournament knowledge. Yeah, just tournament knowledge and just learning how to slot your way around a bit more and where to miss miss and putting a bit better. Have we got an announcement coming soon? Have you been toying with this? No. 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 You don't fancy fancy the 450? No, I just think, like, for me, like... The one, the one, it sounds weird, right? It sounds like a bit of a bizarre reason to not do it, but imagine I couldn't play in the Scottish Pro Am again next year because I'm now a pro status. I see. Imagine I couldn't play at uh, Wentworth if we did. I think did you can, though, can't you? Can't if you're a. Yeah, but I swear there's like lads who play it as a pro, but they just play the Pro Am and they no, just I play off like scratch. I don't think they do. I thought there was. No, I'm not I don't know. But actually, don't you don't want to lose out on content opportunities because you yeah, made the choice I mean, to play. I don't, the cl- I don't the gain. Is, what's, the, what's the point in your turn and pro? Yeah, like what do I gain? It? And no it's not like people say, like, you turn pro, you can go play like every golf course in the world for free. Well, no, I can't. I can't just no call a can. golf course. No, but like <laughs> in the UK, if you're like a PGA professional and stuff, yeah, PGA, like though. you can speak to, yeah, you're PGA professional. You can yeah. speak to like, cl- like the pro shops and stuff and they might like sort you out and stuff. But like, what would be the incentive for me who have not, I have no desire yeah. to play tournament golf every single week or compete in turning pro what would be the point no there, no, there is just, no just, point. Just, what's just, the point just lose my handicap and, and what yeah, mm. yeah. There, there's no point well like, the only point would be so when we all go on golfing days pro-ams he can play you now can play off scratch yeah not yeah, plus one you now, <laughs> yeah. you now get yeah. more of an advantage than what you do now yeah um, but I'm playing as a pro in this first one Yes. Um, but the downside of that, because I'm not an actual pro, if I do end up bashing all these boys up on it in the first one, rather than taking two grand home for first place, it's only 750 quid. Better than nothing, mate. Amateur. Yeah, we could. Uh, you know? Does suck. So perhaps just try and come second. No, but I think even my second would be lower, wouldn't it? It wouldn't be the... Fourth. Yeah, whatever it might be. Just like, so it, it doesn't drops, annoy us. It drops down and down and down. Um, uh, another question for, I'd uh, say, most professionals would be asked and it's a very it's a very obvious question and I don't know what your answer would be I probably could guess it which major would you like to win the open yeah, over, over the masters yeah, yeah do you know what exactly the 100%. same answer as that Reese when we was in Portugal they got asked 100%. at dinner and we all were like oh green jacket is it because you know the lifetime membership yeah, yeah. Rory's not even in there you can always play that it's very yeah. exclusive mm. so is, we yeah. all assumed masters and he went no the open and, I, and he said he'd like the open to be somewhere like where accessible or probably St. Andrews more than likely and then yeah. where everyone could get up there. And he said it would be more of an experience that friends and family could walk yeah. and watch him win that than go and win the Masters. And your reasoning behind what I completely this agree. Video. I mean, oh. for me, like, obviously growing up sort of in the UK and Ireland, like, that event is just a massive event and... I went to Port Rush in 2019, obviously when Shane Lowry won the big Open. Up Shane. Big up, up Shane. Shane. Team Shrix and that. No. Yeah, he is, isn't he? Oh, yeah, uh, I forgot. <laughs> you, do, do you like speak to each other a lot, you two? No. Oh, no. Oh, right, right, we'll carry on the story. Cool. <laughs> um, yeah, I'd just love to win the Open more than anything. I think growing up, seeing it and just the history behind it, like that's kind of where I know the Masters is massive or whatever, but like that is where golf sort of started. To be honest, what do you enjoy watching more, the Masters or the Open? Watching. Mm. Winning round Augusta would be cool. It's the Masters. Yeah, it'd be, be cool. Yeah. Yeah. I do enjoy watching the Masters. Yeah. That's I a think big it's playing playing in it. Like I would rather play the Open and play 
and win the Open for sure. Yeah, just same. for me, it's just I don't know really. It's just I think it's just better. yeah. There's some form of patriotism there. Like it's our home. It's, I know it's the first, I think it's the main so, yeah. one. But for me, I'd, I'd rather win the Masters. To be honest. Yeah, yeah I just think it's bigger bragging rights. I just think like. Yeah, like similar to what Reese was saying, really. Like you'd have like more your friends and family, and just the grandstands and that around the 18th green. Just yeah, if seeing you're playing, that, if you were in the Masters, you family would be at Augusta. Yeah, but I've grown up seeing seeing the Open and just playing Lynx golf, winning it on a Lynx golf. For me, I've grown up. I played so much Lynx golf in Ireland. I played so much Lynx over here, and just to win like a major on a Lynx course. Could you imagine if you won a major at Port Rush? Well, I've I actually just got. That be, I actually just got. I'm not joking. I actually just got. If you could win a major, Reese. The, the, I honestly, he said St Andrews, and the first thing that came into yeah. my head was Port Rush. I just yeah. got. Just it imagine. literally was. Can you imagine if you won the Open round Port Rush. Yeah, it'd be the emotion ridiculous. that would pour from you. You'd Even be honestly, crying. like playing in the event, it just playing in it, it'd be amazing, yeah. and winning it, it'd be. So one day we could have a little claret here, couldn't we? Yeah, we're well, like doing a podcast you know, in a few years. Back, yeah. We've got a little claret there and that. Yeah. Madness. And like, we're all doled out. We've got our Rolexes <laughs> on and that because Ron's treated us. Yeah, that'd be oh, nice, wouldn't nice, it? Nice, man. Boys, we're thanks, for out. Your, thanks for your support. And on the and we're like, what is it, Ron? Yeah. He's like, I've got gifts for you today. And we're like, oh, and he's like, gives us a green box seat. <laughs> 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 Tilly will have one. She's all there, like, glammed up as yeah. well. Just, I, yeah. It's just been unbelievable. Port Rush and... The what a goal for. and the Open 2028 winner, Aaron Edwards Hill. How nice would like, that be? Rap boy, rap boy, yeah. Rap boy. And because like you're an absolute like, hopefully our channel is doing like crazy numbers at that point, and you're such a well-known figure. There's a story around it. The crowds are just going mad for Ron Dog. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> How yeah, great yeah, would that yeah, be? Yeah. The underdog story. I think it's just even like the first tee at the Open. I know at the Masters you have all the people, but just a grandstand surrounding the first tee and mm. the guy like. Because it's on so early in the morning, I've always, I've literally, probably for the past 10 years, I've set my alarm to wake up to watch the first tee shot at the Open. Open qualifying this At like 9.30, yeah. Bloody hell, imagine. Open qualifying this early. year, yeah, I played. Set an alarm to get up at 9.30, Wes. No, 6.30. Oh, I thought you just said 9.30. <laughs> <laughs> I had to first set an alarm to get up at 9.30. <laughs> <laughs> it was a late night on COD. 6.30, it's the only time I wake up early. Yeah. <laughs> when, uh, when is the Open qualifying this year? And are you obviously doing it? Yeah, I'll be doing it. Yeah, I'm not totally sure um, of the dates. I don't know the exact Maybe dates. It's usually June or July. Somewhere Will you still keep going straight time. into second final stage? No, I won't be this year. I have to do first stage. But Ooh. the last, this like last year I did, um, got into final stage. And then the year before I played final stage as well. So I've had sort of two cracks at getting in. Um, not done any good. Just not sort of played my own game really mm. I've just yeah just struggled a bit it's just one of them really we're going to bite the bullet and finally accept that I need to be on the bag for one of these open qualifying <laughs> attempts maybe I feel like we work together work yeah. quite well I just need to like be more relaxed yeah, when do. it comes down to it because yeah, you do. I feel like last year right it was a raw porf course a tough golf course but end of the day like there wasn't that much rough and the win the score to get in the open was one under like got into the open and I feel like my game's good enough to shoot one under par whatever golf course it is for do two know, rounds. Do you know who was who done that, West? What's that? Who, who shot that one under to get into the open? At Royal Paul, Paul. Your man. It was it BRT? It was BRT. Yeah. Some year that boy yeah. had to shout out. Um, yeah. Some year to be fair. Yeah. yeah. Team Shrixen. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Anyway. Again, <laughs> follow team, fellow yeah, Team yeah. Shrixen, yeah. We see the route you're going. But yeah. um, yeah, it's like, it's just about playing your own game. Like it's so, it, it, not like so easy to get into the open no but it's just the hype around trying to get into the open yeah. it's like if you went out and played on a saturday you'd probably be like four under for two rounds off the same tees mm -hmm. whatever and it's just that kind of just well, you, that you relaxed. would be well just whoever like any of the golfers there like 50 of them playing that could are good enough to get in it's just about doing it the same at the right time you know mm. and just being relaxed and calm on the day like that's what gets you gets you there and for those who aren't like familiar with like the actual steps, it is literally you are only seventy two holes away from playing in the open at any given point. Or is it or is 54. it fifty four? Yeah. Fifty four holes. First yeah. stage is just eighteen, second stage is thirty six. Yeah. Yeah. And that is any like the only things I actually tried to uh, um apply to do open qualifying last year, and because 
we don't play in any tournament rounds. We haven't got like um, oh, okay, qualifying oh, yeah. rounds on our on our EGs. We just don't play any club goal. Mm. I actually couldn't enter, which I was a little. What's, what's, what's yeah. the amount of qualifying rounds you have to have? I think you need like five or ten. Yeah, it's probably like eight in it. Yeah, something like that. You need you need probably quite eight, a few, yeah. and they can't be like general play scorecards. It has to be like yeah. qualifying proper like tournament yeah. Yeah. qualifying rounds. rounds yeah. yeah. Which are, that is definitely something I definitely want to do. Not because don't get me wrong, not because yeah, I think video. I'm good enough to qualify for the open, but for the sake of like, what is it? It's like five hundred quid or something, or three hundred quid or two hundred and fifty quid to I enter. Mean, yeah, it's like one fifty. You it's said this before. I think. I think it's a bit more than that. It's not. It's 150 quid. Is it 150? <laughs> so your point I'm telling is you, yeah. Deal. It used to be 100 quid to enter the Open. I thought it was 250. You you know more than me. You're probably right. 150. I'm pretty sure, yeah. The the to, it's a 150 pound green fee to pay the golf courses where they play yeah. most of the Open qualifiers around ones anyway. You're getting your money's worth out of a green fee, let alone like actually having the chance to progress through to stage two. And then if you do progress through to stage two, it's under all under the same fee that is you've paid your money to get in now. Yeah. Now you get to go play a fantastic golf course for 36 holes with the end goal of just like the little old thing that if you actually do manage to to get into the top eight. What is it? Top eight in final from the different... Well, no, different no, locations have different amounts of spots, don't they? Yeah, so this year they had five spots at Port Call where I was playing. Um, I think maybe it was five everywhere, but one place only had four spots. Right. So, so how many spots depends is on it? the amount of field or something. How, how many, many spots play? is it, like, I mean, overall for the UK qualifiers that get that to get the in. Open? Yeah. Um, Total. 20? Something? 24, it was. 24. 24. Now, obviously, you've got to remember as well that you are also having some of the world's best golfers go for these yeah. spots as well. Like I played with Andaban Lahiri. Obviously, he's on the live. Yeah. But like, it's amazing. Like yeah. playing with him, you're just like, this is yeah. cool. Like, Loads of people amazing walked around Walton Heath last year because there were some superstars playing around yeah. Walton Heath qualifying to... A lot of people like get into the open, like the, the, the household names, the familiar faces that you see, they didn't have enough like world ranking points oh, or didn't so win the tournament. Yeah. So they just go yeah. for open qualifying. It's obviously still got, to, still got to perform and do the thing, but that's how they get into it. So like, maybe I'd say like out of 24 spots, maybe like six or seven of them are taken by fantastic yeah, golfers. Like, I think... Charles Schwartzel played yeah. like, ma- like he's won the Masters yeah. Yeah. so he played uh, Royal Sink Ports and then there was someone else like unbelievable playing and yeah you get obviously great players like that that are going to go there and qualify like yeah. they're there to do the job mm-hmm. um, but at the end of the day it's still like my friend Curtis qualified for the Open when he was 18 he did and it just shows it's so doable like I've known a few people over the past few years that have yeah. qualified and got in so and he's also, if you're watching this, Curtis, I don't know if you do watch any of our content, maybe, but congratulations because he had a fantastic finish on the clutch and now he started on the Challenge Tour and started really well on the Challenge Tour as well. So shout out Nipsey. Nipsey, that. bravo to Nip. Carry on going. He came onto my channel and I nearly dished him and the boys up. <laughs> 1v4 <laughs> scenario, Royal Rumble. Um, but no, he's doing really well, which is, which is good. Good to um, see Boys, just another quick reminder about the mega Bonvoy Marriott Masters tournament that Golfing Days have on this year, where you have the chance to win a trip to the 2025 Masters. The format is simple. Four qualifying venues with only 20 pair spaces at each. Three pairs from each venue will qualify for a one night, one round, all expenses paid grand finale at the Forest of Arden at the 15th of September. Format details, it is a two-day combined better ball pairs medal tournament at an 85% handicap allowance. Men off the competition tees, women off the red tees. All of the venues include a one-night, two-round bed and breakfast stay. And again, three pairs will qualify from each qualifying venue. One pair will go through to the final and win a trip to Augusta, baby. Let's get back to the podcast. Head over to Golfing Day's website and get yourself involved. Ron Dog, one last little, um, one last little, I did you could call it tip that I would like to try and get out of you. Mainly to help like my golf game, but maybe a few little other people's golf games at home. When you're going around the golf course, I'm obviously all guns blazing and I, I, I sometimes try to push you into being all guns blazing on the golf course with regards to hit driver on dog, just rip it down there, mate. Don't worry about the consequences, et cetera, et cetera. What is the main determining factor that makes you pull that two iron out so much? He didn't today, though. No, no. Well, you, you can't once. today. No, you can't. The course is 7,000. Seven yeah, yeah, you can't be hitting many wet. two irons around there. <laughs> well, there. There's one reason then. Why yeah. Didn't. What? Well, there's one answer, but... Because there was just, for some, like, there's, like, in, like, Portugal, for example, there's some yeah. holes that I'm looking at with you, and I'm like, 
brother, even if you hit your driver bad, it's not good. And like Portugal is the place where, again, if you unless you hit it in the piss or out yeah, of bounds yeah, on really some lose holes, a ball, yeah. can't lose a ball. You're landing on bark or you land on whatever it might be. There was just like what. What is it in your game? Because I don't think it's necessarily a bad thing because you're, I'd say you've got good course management as a whole. Like you think your way around the golf course really well, whereas I really don't. Like I, I try to sometimes, but then I end up forgetting that I'm trying to do that like three holes in. Yeah, yeah. And then I'll just sort of like go with it. What, what is, when you're standing up on a par four, it's 400 yards or whatever it is, blah, blah, blah. Apart from if it's super narrow or the obvious of like, well, no, I'm not going to hit drivers unless I hit it into that 10 yard gap, I'm going to be in trouble. Why do you pull your toy out so much? <laughs> don't know, really. I think like, depends. Like, w- we played what, Kinton North? I probably didn't hit that many two irons, did I? It depends on the golf course completely. Hit two iron off, it the, de- first. off the first. It depends yeah. what I'm thinking. <laughs> yeah, but why would I hit driver there? I had 90 yards in. What did I two hit iron. There? You didn't have you had more than 90 yards because I hit driver and had like 90 yards. It's going to go back to this argument again is if I have 60 yards I wouldn't yards say it's an in, argument, if I, Ron. If I have 60 yards in or I have 90 yards in, what's the difference? 30, 30 yards. yards. Yeah, but I'm not going to... I could stiff it from 90 yards. I could stiff it from you 60 stiff yards. You could from 200 yards, but I, it's just less likely to happen. Yeah, but not from 60 to, 60 to, to 90. 90. For me, hmm. I don't it's just my opinion, but... I think like 60 yards is a pitch 90 yards is a golf shot nah oh alright big time <laughs> woo <laughs> nah nah d- 90 yards is a golf shot pitching, it's a swing nah you pitch from 90 kinda oh so there's a kinda yeah. so you're kinda yeah. not hitting, you could hit a little pitching wedge little pitch shot yeah. it's yards. not the stock shot from 90 there though like a 60 if you have a 56 y- like you're hitting like a smooth 56 but like a foolish swing yeah, whereas like whatever. 60, 60 yards, you're not hitting a... There's no club in your bag that you're, you're smoothly swinging full to hit a 60 yards, so it's no. a pitch. Depends, you think though, because you could. You if think you need to flop it over a bunker, you could open yeah, up Yeah, but now you're getting all on the technicals yeah, yeah. and stuff. Like, <laughs> I'm saying, do you think in 50 balls... I think what Ash is saying is 50 balls yeah, to a 60-yard pin, yeah. 50 balls to a 90-yard pin, you're saying there's no dispersion. You're, it's exactly the same as there There's not much. There might just be like, I don't know, five shots that go a little bit further away from 90 yards. Or out of a cluster of 100 you know goals. What? YouTube video coming soon. I'll say, we'll put this to the yeah. test. <laughs> we'll put it to yeah. the test. Well, part. I yeah, think yeah, people know the answer at home. Yeah. Like, it's just like there would be a significant dispersion difference out of 100 balls from 90 and 100 well, balls from 60. We'll see on the track man, soon. We'll go down to one of them ranges that has a top tracer and we'll find out. Yeah. All right, sound. Yeah. Um, okay, but anyway, going back <laughs> to the on. point. Back to the point. Kinton North would be a good example of that. I don't, I didn't, I'm standing on Kinton North first tee box hitting driver across the corner over that tree, I'm not seeing any trouble there. But it's about knowing your... It's about knowing yourself. Like, you might not see any trouble, right? And then we might get to a hole that's dog leg left to right. <laughs> yeah, but I'm saying, I'm saying I'm not seeing any trouble there because over that tree, there's a 90, 100-yard fairway from right to left. Yeah. And there's no hazard down there I can hit into. So I'm thinking I back myself enough that even if I hit one offline or I do something, I'm still going to be down there. Whereas you're okay. looking at that hole and hitting a great two iron, don't get me wrong, and I bogeyed it and you walked off with a par. So, <laughs> solid. That, it, so <laughs> it is what it is. But like, I just just curious to whether it's purely just a confidence thing because you're not going through the well, you wasn't going through the best stage with driver at that point, or is it that you're actually course managing it? You're standing on that tee thinking, well, the hole's three seventy, I can hit two iron and be left with this. Is that the thought process? I I look at I try and play golf very simply, so. I'll stand there, and if I'm, if I can't, if I can drive it on the green with a driver, okay, that's a big advantage to then laying up and hitting like 60, 70 yards in, right? So that's a big difference in what's going to happen. And at the end of the day, it's the first tee shot away, so why do I have to go and try and bang a driver where it could go anywhere when I know 100 probably... Night, probably going to hit 98 balls out of 100 in a fairway with a two iron and leave myself a wedge in and that's the strength of my game so I just play to my own strengths that's the way I look at it and minimising risk it's minimising yeah. like it's hard to explain but but I would say it's using, very simple because why would I take a risk it, me hitting a driver there is a risk it sounds very negative it is I'm very ju- negative but it's not because it's 
it's smart. It's me minimising a risk. So of why aren't all the boys on the PJ Tour just because they could hit freewood into the fairway 100% of the time? Why they're just not all nobbing fairway down there at 270 every shot? Why are they pulling their driver out and risking it for that extra 30 yards, 40 yards of driver? Where, though? Like, when they can just knob it down if, the... I guarantee if you had 140 PGA Tour players at Kenton North, they would all be hitting two iron down the fairway. What, on the first? Yeah. Wow. Well, all day long. I'm well, telling well, you. When we're big enough, we're going to get the top 100. Next video, we're going to get the top 100 golfers <laughs> in the world to come to Kenton North. To Kenton North, <laughs> and we're going to line them all yeah, up on the first Yeah, team. and see, see what they'd hit. No, that's fair enough. Like, every, well, Listen, the beauty of the game is there is no right way and there's no wrong way to play it. It's just why, like... There's no point in me taking a risk to where we're I not going to agree on this, ball. by the way, because you right. weren't going to never. The reason I'm not going to agree on this on that specific hole, if we're using that as an example, is because you're not going to lose your golf ball, buddy. Might where you, a risk of losing a golf ball? You where are you losing left. your golf ball? There, you could hit a tree or something and go. I hit it, I hit it left, didn't I, buddy? Yeah, hmm? I lost it. Hit it left, lost it. No, you didn't. I, I did. No, you. I think that's a you stupid snap hole, hooked though. it. <laughs> Left into I think that's like a, a oblivion. stupid hole to like <laughs> compare it to because it's the first hole of the day as well. Like it comes down to a mental thing as well. Like it's the first golf hole of the day. I have eighteen holes, and we've been on the range for forty-five minutes Give, prior to that. Just get all. All I need is a second shot into the first. Mm -hmm. That's all I need. A second shot into the first. Mm -hmm. hmm. Well, I was actually gonna. Before we got into that, I was actually going to, because we started speaking about groups, potential groups in the open and stuff. And uh, I thought that we could nicely go into uh, what three ball, because obviously you're playing, let's say, professional golf and whatnot. What three ball will make you realise, shit, I've made it. But then we got into but then we got into like two iron discussion, because it would have gone into the open thing. But you know, you said, no, you can play with anyone. But like what three ball... And it, you might just say number one and two, Rory and whoever, but like what three ball, when you look left and right on the first tee, you think, oh shit, I've actually made this. Like it's mm. all becoming reality. You're talking about the grand, you can be wherever, just any yeah. event. Like who, who are you think, not your, not the one you most want to play with. Yeah, yeah. Who are you thinking, fucking hell, we've, we've done it. Boys, GS, we've done it. And we're like, is, ah. it, is it Ash and Westy when you stand on the two of us? Yeah, like, 100%. You know yeah, like a pro. Made, I've already made it. Yeah. So actually, <laughs> it, could be, it could be Ash and Westy at like one of the unreal pro ams, and you might go, yeah, yeah you boys, I've know, made yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. But no, honestly, what? what I don't know. It's ball? a tricky like question, really. I think once I know, like, I guess once you've got your tour card and you're standing there and. You play, you're like you're playing a full season. I think you kind of stand there, and I would. I don't think it's any specific players. Just any. Yeah, unless PGA you're tour. unless you're playing. Yeah, like any sort of okay. PJ Tour event or so. Then we'll say anything that you're sitting there playing. You're like, well, I've done it. Like I've got my card. Obviously, you need to keep your card or whatever. But there's still got to be massive when, shitty bum when, like, you say, you say you get the European right, when tour you're playing card. like the FedEx. Probably, if you stand there, right? If I'm being honest, you stand there and you're like. I'm playing the FedEx like grand final here and there's only like 30 of the best players in the world mm. and you're standing there playing with like Scheffler or Hovland or something Good. and mm. you're Good. like yeah right, hopefully we're not we don't eight, we're playing for 18 million dollars today we don't really speak about Scheffler that <laughs> so much if you're teeing it up in the FedEx you're probably thinking yeah we've made it yeah, yeah that's, oh, well, that's that, cuz yeah. you've you yeah. you're done then aren't you you've yeah. like or, you've answer. either won an event or yeah. you're you, you, yeah. You're definitely playing the next year. You're definitely playing like three or four years. Like you, you kind of feel like then. I think you're like well, we've made it like fully. Would you um, if right now, if tomorrow morning you woke up, yeah, and Liv called you and offered you a place on Liv, would you go? Yeah, so let's say. <laughs> no, 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 just let him get an offer. Greg, Greg calls you. Sam, what's the offer? Ron no, Dog, it's Greg. Million One pound. Million. Yeah. Million pound what, contract. Year? Five year. Five year, bloody hell. Million pound contract, come and play on live. Yeah. Um, we've noticed you, we've seen you on the GS page and yeah. we like what we see. We want to bring some young uns in. Mm. Million pound on the table, Ron. I mean, we, Aaron, Yeah, sorry. I mean, if I'm being honest, like, I'd say yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah good lad. <laughs> the correct Tilt. answer. If, if I, yeah. correct no, if answer. I'm being honest, just because there's a difference, right? If I, if I had... A PJ Tour card, yeah. and then they offered me, I wouldn't go to live. What about but if they offered you a fat minute, bag? What about if they no, offered you? No, I wouldn't go because I've dreamt about playing on the PJ Tour, and I've got my PJ Tour card, and that's where I wanted to go, and that's where I wanted to play. Mm -hmm. I would play on the PJ Tour, mm -hmm. but 
If they offered you a 50 if they million offered pound. me no, if they offered me it right now, mm-hmm. I would I'd take it. I think you'd be silly not to take it personally okay. because at the end of the day, I'm an upcoming pro and yeah. you need to start somewhere and it's a tour to play on. You're playing the best player in, players in the world, whether you like it or not. People uh, the best golf arguments. course is traveling the world. Pure. Yeah, I mean, like, why not? But if I already had my PGA Tour card, I wouldn't go to live because I've, I don't see myself as like a 16 year old now being like, oh, I'd love to grow up and like play on the live tour. Yeah. yeah. Like I would see myself being like, oh, I'd love to grow up and play on the PJ tour. I can kind of really see you in Majestics though with Westwood and Polter like turning around. <laughs> like you've got that Majestic vibe to you. No, that's fair I enough. I played with like, Lee Westwood's son last week. You played with him? Yeah. Decent golfer? Sam, yeah, he's a good player, yeah. Yeah, what did, did you, you play? Well, he's a pro. Oh, is he? Oh. Yeah. Oh, okay. Would, I, would he beat me? Probably, yeah. Oh, sound. Nice one, Sam. <laughs> it, was only a, it was only a probably, though. We'll wasn't dead, sir. Where did you play with it in Portugal? Yeah, he was playing the Portugal Pro Tour. Pure. Nice. Because yeah. you um, boys have like a little WhatsApp group, didn't you? All of you like pros and that have like a no, little group. R- did Reese tell you that? Did Reese tell you that? Yeah. Ron ain't involved oh, in a lot of them. They no. get, he gets kicked out. I, no, I leave them. <laughs> That's what I do. Which I thought was quite nice. No, I we're in, quite we nice. are yeah. in a WhatsApp group with You all like try and check in like accommodation and whatnot. Yeah. How do you go about getting an invite? It's a bit awkward if you don't, though, isn't it? I don't really care. Oh. If I'm being honest, oh. yeah, yeah. All right, so like, that's on. my. All right, moving that's on. He's solo warrior. Yeah. Really yeah. um, solo. Just back on the uh, live PJ Tour thing. Yeah. Um. So if you had your PJ Tour card. Yeah. But you say you've been on the tour for two years. Yeah. A year. No, no, I say two years. Yeah. And haven't won anything, made a few cuts, all that sort of stuff, and then live come in with a with a big offer. Would you leave PJ Tour? No. F- fifty million pounds. Yeah, like they wouldn't offer me fifty. Okay, well, so Tyrrell, you're Tyrrell off- Hatton. Yeah, no. but Tyrrell Hatton. Yeah, but Tyrrell. Yeah, Tyrrell had one four Rolex series. Yeah. Right, okay, right. but fine. So they come. They come in and offer offer an amount of money that's like going to match what you realistically is probably going to earn on the PGA Tour for like the next three or four seasons. They offer it as a signing bonus to come over to them. Then you're also playing every event which is worth X amount of money. Yeah. Um, you're staying on the PGA Tour. Yeah, I think so, yeah. I've grown up wanting to play on the PGA Tour. Mm. I think that's what I'd do. But as we said, like if they offered it me now with no status or anything, mm-hmm. I'd probably say yes, 100%. Yeah. That's fair enough. It's just my opinion on it, yeah. yeah. Really. I suppose if it's your dream, like you've always like people like... Tiger but like, I w- I'd love to like, if you're playing it, oh, I'm playing like the waste management this week. Mm. Like, it's just class, isn't it? Like you're playing these prestigious events... Whereas you go to live and you're like... Funny oh, one to say that it was prestigious yeah. then. That was a weird They're getting one, a lot so. of slack at the minute. But well, sure. well, well are, do you know what I mean? Like like the Genesis or... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I get, something I get like yeah. that. Yeah, I get, and you're yeah. like, oh, I'm playing these events. Like I've grown up watching, playing get, these yeah. events. So like, it's amazing to play in these. Whereas live, it's like, oh, you're just playing like the Maya Cobra. You played tour. that gaff? No. Have you not? No, is it good? It's good. Have you played it? I've played it once, yeah. Have you? Yeah, I went out to Mexico with Els and she booked me to play. No way. Yeah. With a big cenote in the middle of the fairway. Yeah, the fa- that's yeah. Cool. unbelievable golf course. Nice. Condition-wise, I said this to West on the last on episode one of the zero zero one of the Golf Supply podcast. If you haven't watched it, go check it out. Our introduction. But you asked me, didn't you? And I said, yes. like, course condition-wise, like maintenance and stuff. Like, I don't know how the go- our golf course could be like pure, and that it was an absolute joke when we played it. Nice. It was. It was mental. Pure. It looks good. Yeah. Tough as well. Is it hard or not? I was nowhere near as good at golf then. Like I was probably playing up like the golf supply wasn't a thing. Like I was probably like playing like quite part time, so it was probably off like eight or nine probably or something yeah. at that time, something like that. And I can't remember what I don't I don't know if I kept a scorecard through the eighteen, to be honest with you. Um but they have like these like little uh, meerkats and stuff that run around the golf. They're not called oh, meerkats, really? they're called Tank Elsh, yeah. And they're like really friendly, they'll come up to the buggy and you can feed them and all this sort they're of like stuff. They're like you, little snacks and all that. Like you, like you look over like a little hamster like just eating in eating in the corner. Uh fa- your favourite golf club, Ron Dog? My favourite golf club. Yeah. In the world. In the world. Raw Port Rush. Yeah. Golf course. Mm. Yeah. Mm. I just love that course. So good. <laughs> Have you played the other big ones? Like what? Murfield. Not Trump. played Murfield. I played... Trump Turnbury. Royal County Down. Played the tournament around there. Um, what else have we got? I was talking like just links in general, like, like the really famous ones. I know that is. Yeah, Candy majority of them, yeah. One, yeah. Yeah, I played the majority of them, yeah. You've done the King's Barns and that around Scotland? Not played Kings Barnes, no. Trump. I played Trump. Muirfield. Not played Muirfield. I just said that. Oh. So what ones have you done then around that area? <laughs> what around Scotland? Have you done Gullen? St Andrews. Gullen. Yeah, I played Gullen. Yeah. What number? 
two, I think. <laughs> I can't remember. Is it one or two? <laughs> well, well, I don't know. know. It makes well, a big difference what one you have played. Know. Maybe three. I tell no. you. <laughs> or four. <laughs> there is only four. Is there a seven? <laughs> no. There's like seven in there. I think there's only four. Well, Gallon one, two, and three. Oh. Gallon one, two, and three. Yeah. Uh, what was the guy's name? Uh, Gavin Hastings. Gavin Hastings. Yeah. Uh, what else remember? Yeah. Favourite course? Played some really, really amazing golf courses around Ireland that aren't like well known, I guess. But, but what about England? just as good as. What's the one you tell me all the time? Crute Island. What is it? Crute Island. Crute Island. Yeah. Like a Disney. What a golf course. Yeah. Honestly, you should go play it. It's a nine holer. It's pure. What about England? What's the best course you played or most best enjoyable played? course? Like Raw Birkdale? Yeah, played that? Yeah. Birkdale. Birkdale's probably. Up there, my, one of my favourite links courses in England, I'd say. St. George's. Hard, isn't it? They're all coming back to me now. <laughs> and it's all coming Lidham. back. Mm. Lidham's tough. You really like um, Formby as well, don't you? Formby's a great, great Yeah, great Yeah, we had, um, yeah. we had a round at Formby. Um, no, we had a round at Formby Ladies. <laughs> yeah, Ash thought we... <laughs> it's decent <laughs> though, isn't it? Do you remember that? No, yeah, very good. Yeah. But uh, Ash... Thought that he'd done a solid, and he's like, "Listen, I've heard about Formby everywhere. Like, <laughs> but well, played Heskef and Formby, and I'm like, Sam, turn up, and we're like, he's like, oh, boys, you playing?' And we're like, "Yeah." And I went, "Oh, you're on the ladies." Yeah, and, we went, and he went, "Is that not the good one?" Because I keep hearing Formby ladies, and I'm like, "No, nah, turn up on the t-. so big queue for the first tee of all the the caddies, the, that, one. the caddies, yeah. We walked yeah, to the first caddies. We, we walked to the first tee in the ladies, <laughs> and who was there? Four ball of ladies having, yeah. a, having, oh, a, having a party. Took a selfie with us, and they're yeah. all like, "You boys can go through." And we're like, "They're like slapping, normally play this slapping Westie's <laughs> ass and that." It was like, yeah, love it. And, but yeah, like yeah, on the, and then we turn around, and there's like loads of groups queuing for the first tier, like yeah. caddies and that. And we're like just walking f- across the first uh, fairway like this mm. up to the ladies. Thought it was the lovely good one. Though. Turns yeah. out, still a good course. A lot of ladies like quite short. We played it in like forty mile an hour. Yeah, it was tough, brutal. Tough. Quite quite tight. Quite short, but like fun track. But yeah, Formby. Formby Golf Club that goes around the outside of it is actually yeah. the Amazing. golf club. Yeah. Sick golf club. We played the know. English arm around there. You played the English yeah. arm around there. Yeah. Winner was Tom Furloway. He won the English arm around that We know place. him. We you know, know him, yeah. Thomas, yeah. He hits it very far as well, doesn't he? He does like, so far. He hits it far. He yeah. it short. On the 18th at the Players Club when all you choppers are hitting driver, I didn't he's, hitting, there. he's hitting... Well, you, you, you're amongst the tier two boys. He hits. <laughs> this was tier he, one. He hits two iron up to where they're hitting driver. Yeah, he hits like, it that's miles, ridiculous, yeah. mate. He, he hits it a long yeah, way. He loves the camera. Again, as well. he spent a lot of time in America. They didn't he at college in America. I yeah, think. it was he only COVID America, that yeah. brought him back. Yeah. It was COVID. It that was COVID back. that ruined it for him. Oh, mm. really? He was still out there doing well, um, and he just said COVID sort of rollocks it up, and uh, he had to come back. So that ended that. Last, Last thing, Ron Dog. Um, how do you like playing on YouTube? How is that like? Because obviously, so I didn't actually get into the story of how me and Aaron yeah, actually start. F- how we first met. How we first met, yeah. Day. So <laughs> for people who watch the channel, the first video that Ron Dog ever featured in is we've got a series, which we will be like bringing back like when the weather gets a little bit better. But it's called a level series on our, on our YouTube channel. Um, and basically the concept of those videos is myself playing against either or elite amateur golfers or professional golfers in nine hole stroke play matches. One to see if I can win, which I don't ever really go into most of their matches thinking that I'm going to win, but to see if I can test myself against some of the best. But two to also highlight that even through a nine hole match, there is a significant skill gap in your average club plus one golfer to someone who is either an elite amateur or a professional golfer. Now, started off quite hot the record, done all right, won a few. I think I've played like four or five. I've won maybe three of them and lost two of them. Mm. So the record isn't terrible. Um, but yeah, so we put it out on Instagram and Rondog slid into my DMs on the golf supply. Did I actually? Is that why? Yeah. Happened? That's tragic. What did I say? Hello, he mate. slid in no. and said something along the lines of member at Woodbridge, uh, currently playing for England, handicap plus seven, um, and then something about wanting to do the video. And he was like, yeah. So I was like, that makes sense. That's the kind of elite amateur that I'm looking for to play. Um, but why I, think we, why I think we filmed with a lot of people who aren't in the social media space, whether it be subscriber scrambles or like professionals on the clutch tour, whatever it might be, we've had our fair share of film with people who aren't, um, influencers is the wrong word, but like uh, familiar with having a camera pointed in their face for whatever reason. 
Um, and you were just one of the better ones that you just done it really well from never doing it before. Oh, really? Like in yeah. the, well, did you not think, did you not watch that levels back thing know. back and forth? You weren't awkward at any point, mm-hmm. spoke to the camera well, spoke through your shots, me and you had a good bit of banter. It weren't like, like sometimes like we've had people like before or like they freeze up, they don't really talk a lot. But you have to guide them a little bit. Yeah, just, yeah. you have to really like oh, okay, push yeah. and lead them a little bit. What, does playing in front of the camera, YouTube cameras bother you at all? Does it alter your playing performance at all? Not really, no. No? You are good at it. You're good at yeah. it. As I think like, I, I think like obviously it was something new, like actually having it like that close when, when you was going around playing, it's like literally in your face, like mm-hmm. Westy, big six foot five bloke, like mm. shoving it in your face. Weird guy like, yeah. as well. Strange bloke you say. Um, <laughs> yeah, I think having that, like it definitely takes a little bit of getting used to, but I mean, I've sort of, I've sort of in the past, like when, you're obviously playing sort of for England and doing that sort of stuff. Like there's the odd time where they have like the odd cameras and you have to speak into cameras and mm. stuff like that. And I think that's helped a little bit to do yeah. with it. Um, but I don't, it doesn't affect my performance or anything at all. I mean, it just is what it is. Like it? when we was out in Portugal, did you like just like, because we'd done it like four days in a row and stuff, did it like, do you just like forget the cameras there now? Or unless if you're not talking to it, do you just like, is it just kind of like, is what it is? Like? Yeah, I think when, especially in Portugal, like it's nothing, I pass my mind back, like it wasn't, it was like it wasn't even there really. Yeah. The camera, like going mm. round, you don't, unless you're talking through the shots. But I mean, at the end of the day in that pro-am, you boys were kind of talking through the holes and doing all that sort of stuff. And I was just hitting the shots, but mm. it doesn't really. But you, you're still really, having to, for every single approach you're hitting in, speaking yeah. about what you're going to hit, how you're going to hit, for every single chip, for every single putt that we're showing of you, yeah. you're still speaking through your shot and being like, because like you being the prof- professional golfer in the format of that video, you was in every fucking hole, Ron. Yeah. yeah. You were scoring on every single hole. So you are, you, you featured, you were in those videos more than anyone else, like for the consistently for the four days. So there's a lot of, camera time being shoved yeah. in your face there's a lot that you have to say to that camera um does it not like because even for me personally I, I, I said like when someone who hasn't who hasn't been on camera or anything before and you shove a camera in their face like it alters your your brain chemistry yeah. big time mate i think i think for me like at the end of the day we i could probably speak for most of the pros like we do it for like a living even like the top amateurs whatever like it's just a natural thing so like tom furloway shit himself did he? He doesn't he like it. He absolutely the camera. melted. Yeah. Really? Oh, he didn't like Ratting it. Ratting his driver out of bounds, couldn't speak. Like, he yeah. was shitting his he, pants. That's he, really, the yeah. clutch he really didn't like the camera. No, I just thought, like, you go through your process and you just you just do it and it is what it is. Like, it's, it is definitely one of them things you, you need to get used to. I mean, for me, the most, annoy, like, the most annoying thing is because I'm a quick player as well, you having to I have to wait around for like the camera to get there to do the my shot. So I'd rather just be like, yeah, like, I'll go. So it like, it can throw me out of my rhythm maybe a mm. little bit, but it's probably a good thing for me anyway to like learn to slow mm. things down a little I bit mean, more anyway. It was probably like, it looked at Portugal, it wasn't fast rounds, was it anyway? When you're playing no, the programs no, and yeah. you're going out last, like the pace of play is dictated by the people you've got in front. But like today, for yeah, example, yeah. Like, we were out on the golf course. Me and West, that probably was five hours. Like, by the time we actually got in, yeah, yeah. we were out there for five hours because, like, JK, bless him, has got to, like, run from yeah, us yeah. doing our shot, then across to you, and we got to follow and do the camcorder and stuff. So, like, it's definitely a lot slower. But, yeah, like, that was the way that we, we met for anyone who's, who's interested in that. And just what I liked, apart from, like, I just like you as a person, but, and obviously you're great at golf, was you just handled the camera really well. Like, because even me now, like, we say it all the time, didn't you? I will, like sometimes I'll play 18 holes and I'm on camera and I'm filming or I'm playing and stuff and I honestly couldn't tell you about a single shot that I thought about or anything. It's just all a blur. Like, I'm not thinking about my golf. I'm not thinking about anything. Whereas, like, if I go and play off camera, like, with my pals, I'll be having, like, pre-shot routines. I'll be, like, trying to get little feels as I'm going around there and stuff. When the camera's on, 17 at Royal Norwich, all I'm thinking is, like, I'm tired at that point. All I'm thinking is, like, just don't dump it in the water because the camera's on. Do you know what I mean? Don't fat it into the water in front of me. Like, I don't want to look like a knob. Uh, I ended up blocking it right nearly into the bunker, but it didn't yeah. go in the water. And Westy finned it to 20 feet. Finned it to win. Yeah. Yeah, I think it can 100% have an effect on people, especially like, obviously, if, you, if you've if just got a guy who's never played tournament golf or done anything like that, and 
never sort of had maybe a bit of like media attention or whatever like if you got a guy off like scratch say or five or somewhere between that mm. like they'd probably just shit himself on the camera and they'd be yeah. all over the place yeah but i think yeah i don't know for me like i've kind of been not involved in like cameras all the time but i've always you always have that little bit of like pressure on you when you're playing anyway so like i'm always going to be a little bit nervous so like obviously like probably not today but when if we're playing a tournament or even if you're putting a camera in my face like i've felt the same little bit of nerves mm. before so it's nothing unusual mm. for me like since i was like 18 whether i'm teeing it up in some international event or whatever like there's a bit of like say first tee nerves or whatever it might be but like do you just, think you'd have scored it's just it? dealing with them everyone gets nervous Tiger Woods gets nervous Jack Nicholas gets nervous mm -hmm. it's just they just deal with it better so do you think if a camera wasn't pointed in your face for those three days over at Portugal you'd have shot the same anyway the camera held no no relevance yeah, the, the only thing is like I don't know I might have been a the little the shadows better. man was like the probably put you off a little yeah, bit. I was just yeah about to say that, that. Was, that was getting yeah. um it's just stuff like that it's a bit more like of me getting out of my routine so that's what slows me that that's what will make me maybe not perform as well because it's like not getting into that sort of swing of things and routine mm. and that but it's not nothing to do with like me shitting myself because there's a camera in my face like mm. that's got nothing to do with that's it good. Like, it doesn't bother me that's a good me. thing mm. it's just yeah just hitting a golf ball and we've offered him loads of times and we like to come full time on a golf supplier but he's like he's really committed to this silly little pro journey isn't he and he just won't he just won't give it up just yet but know that if you do ever want to come full time onto the golf supply, that the offer is always there. If Live Golf Aaron don't snap you up, we will. Yeah, yeah, fifty million. Yeah. Uh, we'll see what we can. Do. That's what it's going to cost us. Is it fifty million? <laughs> we'll negotiate. Yeah. We'll negotiate. Well, everyone, um, have you got anything else to ask the Rat Boy? You're our first ever guest. You are. Yeah. You Amazing. are the first guest. Privileged of the GS or? Podcast. Yeah, it's been a pleasure, really. I think first, well, one of the first on the levels, and then. One of the first podcasts. Yeah. yeah. It goes to so show how much good, yeah. we love and care about you, Aaron. I look I know, at you yeah. as like a, a, a little mm. long, a brother that I never had. Never had a little brother. Well, I'm one of the first we said film frequently with us and you'll yeah. have a spot here at the table. Yeah. We haven't offered that to anyone else. So. Yeah, no, it's, I we appreciate it loads and we yeah, it's you. great being on the channel. I mean, it's always good fun. You always see the silly comments and stuff like that, but I mean. Mm. Silly comments. Silly, silly we'll get another comments. pro -am at some point, I would assume, this year. Yeah. It's a shame you Probably. couldn't come to this one, mate. Like, genuinely gutted that you could obviously, well, best of luck on the Alps Tour, and you're there, you're not with, in Portugal with us for good reason, because it's the start of your season. Um, yeah. But I was genuinely, like, gutted that you wouldn't be coming back out to Portugal for this one, because it was absolutely hilarious. Yeah, it was good. A get lot of that. Get some redemption. A lot of well. that trip, yeah. It was really good. Um oh. Anyway, like we said, um, these boys aren't living the most glamorous life in the world. So he's got Strix and backing him behind him, but these boys could always do with more sponsors. Get your brand in, your, lo your logo, whatever it might be, on a uh, bag. I don't know if you're allowed cap, but bag, clothing, that sort of stuff. If you're a, if you're a clothing brand company, if you're a clothing manufacturer and you're watching this and you want to you wanna get in touch, if you own a small business, a large business, and you want to support Aaron on your journey, the one thing that I would say is every penny invested won't be a penny was wasted. And I genuinely do believe that. We've seen this boy play um, to not even his full ability, but when he's playing to 50% of his ability, it's pretty scary to watch anyway. So any investment into this lad will not be a wasted investment. If you can have a bit of spare, it's all tax deductible. You can write it all off. You're going to be able to get a lot of it back. If you can spare any cash and you want to support them, the Alps journey isn't cheap. Um, and like I said, with, with, with anything else, if you're a brand, if you're clothing, if you're a company and you can spare any donation into this boy's pocket or all be spent on travel, accommodation, tournament entry and just being able to live uh, a little bit more comfortably as you're sort of flying around Europe playing on the Alps store. So um, all of his Instagrams are in the description to this video. You can message us direct on the Gold Supply Instagram or you can get in the comments on, the, on these and we can pass over contact details for you to be able to speak to Aaron direct. Um, shout out Golfing Days as always for sponsoring the pod thank you very much to Royal Norwich for having us yes thank you thank you very much lovely day and a little lovely room to day. do the pod which is very much appreciated yeah, nice very nice gaff yeah. down there nice little bougie setting yeah. in here um, like we said in the ad roll um, if you want to come down here and play it for yourself they have a lot of different um, packages available so you can stay you can come and just play the golf here you can come down and you can stay you can do all that sort of stuff and again with Golfing Days if you are looking to play in any overseas pro-ams even go and sort out just an overseas trip with the boys. Um, 
go and follow uh, go and check out olivia mark and the team ollie over there um they'll hook you up with uh, whatever you need and then you've got the uk stuff as well national club champion golf or whatever it is isn't it? aeh Thank you very much. Yeah. Thanks, Ron Doug. Honestly, Episode zero, 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 002 for us. First yeah. guest. We'll have you back on, I'm sure. Yeah, oh, for sure. We'll have you back on. Yeah. Catch up with you during the season. Maybe we'll come to you. We'll bring the equipment and we'll meet you abroad somewhere. My first uh, podcast, so. Is first. it your first pod? Yeah, ever, yeah. yeah. Again, this is what I mean, though. It's just like you just take to things like a duck to water, yeah. doesn't he? Yeah. Doesn't get phased. He does get phased when on the tee box when he's the first at Kinton North and he doesn't want to. Like, he phased at stuff like that. But like anything with like media, it's only going to serve you well in the future, mate. Yeah, I'd agree. It's only, gonna, it's, only, it's only a good thing, isn't it? If you're the, the you can, anyway. We've covered this. I'm going to give it a shy FX. Or, Thank right. you, GS Familia. Thanks if again, everyone, well. for watching. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Check us out on Spotify. Uh, do all the good stuff, and we will see you in the next episode of the Golf Supply Podcast. We love you all. Peace. Adios. Bosh. Bosh.